its broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave Fabulous atmosphere. Kickoff is next from New Orleans. First to John and Terry again at the Disneyland Resort out there in Southern California. Happy New Year, fellas, from New Orleans. Mike, a very happy New Year to you as well. We'll get you ready for the Nokia Sugar Bowl here on the Ford Mid-Game Report. And let's talk about these two teams. A funny thing happened on the way to New Orleans. It was supposed to be maybe Michigan <laughs> against Tennessee or Florida against Michigan, something like that. Wasn't expected to be. Oh, from Baton Rouge. Still at the road, untraveled for Louisiana State of late. It's taken 15 long years for LSU to make this special Southeastern sojourn. Led by a no-nonsense coach, a senior quarterback named Rohan, and the nation's best receiver, LSU, champions of the West, pull the title game shocker. LSU is the 2001 SEC champion. Illinois football is rich in tradition. The galloping ghosts and buckets. But tradition has taken a vacation of late. It's been 18 years since the last outright Big Ten title. And four seasons ago, the school's worst ever. 11 games, 11 losses. But the next year, Ron Turner brought in quarterback Kirk Hittner. Now he teams with Brandon Lloyd for the Big Ten's best pass-catch combo. And for the first time ever, the team from Champaign is popping its New Year's court in New Orleans. It is the champions of the Southeastern Conference, Louisiana State University, and the champions of the Big Ten, Illinois, here in the Big Easy for the 2002 Nokia Sugar Bowl. It's been 15 long years since LSU has made the short trip from Baton Rouge, and the fans are ready for a big night in the Big Easy. Good evening, everyone. Mike Tirico. Again, our wishes from our crew in New Orleans that you have a happy, healthy 2002. All the talk of the polls and the BCS, these teams aren't title teams, but earned their way into the bowl championship series on the field. They both were surprise outright winners of their conference championship. Nobody's going to walk off tonight and say we're number one, but they haven't been on this big a stage since the mid-80s. So what happens here tonight is so important and crucial to the football programs at Illinois and LSU. I'm joined by former UCLA quarterback David Norrie. And David, why don't we start with the Tigers? At one point, they were 4-3 and three this season, but won their last five to get here. Yeah, late season, this team had three conference losses. Nobody was thinking BCS. In fact, not many people were thinking bowl, period. But two players carried this team down the stretch. Quarterback Rohan Davey and wide receiver Josh Reed. Josh Reed had the best single season in major conference history at the wide receiver position. 94 catches, over 1,700 yards. He's a great route runner, excellent hands, might be the best at the college level after the catch. Rohan Davey is a big quarterback, 245 pounds. He can look down the field, buy time, likes to keep his eyes trained down the field and make big plays to his wideouts on the outside. They're a big reason in the second year. Nick Saban's gotten his team to the Sugar Bowl. Here is Nick with our sideline reporter tonight, Dr. Jerry Punch. Happy New Year, Doc. 
Thank you, Michael, and Happy New Year, everyone. You know, LSU finished the season with two emotional wins, the first over division rival Auburn, then second-ranked Tennessee in the SEC title game. And, Coach, for the last three and a half weeks, your players have been congratulated on that fabulous finish. Could that affect their focus and concentration early on tonight? Well, we certainly hope not, but, you know, the SEC championship game is a big game in the SEC, and it was a very emotional game for us against Tennessee. But I'm hopeful that we'll bounce back and, try to prove that we belong in the top 10, try to prove that we belong in the BCS, and that we are legitimate SEC champions. Hey, best of luck to you, Coach. All right, thanks, Jerry. Michael? Doc, let's take the other side now, Illinois. David, four seasons ago, Illinois was 0-11. They win tonight. It's a school record 11th win in the same year. Big reason on the field is their senior quarterback, Kurt Kittner. Oh, Kurt Kittner is the most underrated college quarterback in the game today. He had better numbers than Ken Dorsey down at Miami, better numbers than Joey Harrington out at Oregon, and he gets shut out in New York. Doesn't even get a plane ticket back to Manhattan for the Heisman ceremony. He's a talented passer, sees the field extremely well, can come to secondary receivers, and his specialty is the deep ball. Throws the deep ball better than anybody in the country, loves to set up cornerbacks out on the outside with arm fakes and big plays to his big play wide receiver. He's really good in Ron Turner's pro-style offense. Ron is now with Jerry Punch. Well, Mike, it's considered one of the most remarkable turnarounds in college football history. Coach, in the preseason, you guys weren't even on the radar screen for the top 25, much less a Big Ten title or a Nokia Sugar Bowl on New Year's night. Considering all that you've accomplished, what does this night mean to you and this team? Well, it means a great deal to, to me, but most importantly to this football team and to everybody, to the administration for sticking with us and giving us everything we need to be successful, the coaching staff, support staff, and most importantly to our players that have fought through a lot of adversity to get to this point. Hey, Coach, best of luck to you. Thanks, sir. I appreciate it. Michael? All right, Jerry, Illinois has won the toss and deferred to the second half, so LSU will receive. Steve Fitz will kick it off. I heard $500, $600, $700 for a seat to come in here tonight. This is the night that more favors have been called in in New Orleans than many other nights in the sports history of this city. If you know somebody, you got in tonight. But you'll hear a lot of I-L-L-I-N-I because at least 15, probably 20,000 fans have made the trip from Champaign. Underway in the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Kickoff return by Jeffrey Henderson to the 26-yard line. Special team tackle by Nick Piazza. We bring out Rohan Davey, LSU's quarterback. Final season, final game, finally healthy most of the year, but an injury in the SEC title game. Still, he goes at just a little under 100%. School record for passing this year, and he's huge. 6'3", 240. You got to hit Rohan Davey low and hard to bring him down. Opening drive starts from the 26. And Dominic Davis powers forward for nine and a half yards. Davis is starting at tailback tonight because of LeBrandon Tofield's knee injury suffered in the SEC title game. Royals a good pass catching tight end. Going to see a lot of three receivers. Clayton's a freshman, really good. Reed we talked about in the open, and Terrell Myers. Up front, the strength is to the right. Wilkerson in the middle, a true freshman and a future star. Pierce, 78, the best blocker with Baggett on that right side. And there is Josh Reed, the 94 catch man this year. Second and less than a yard. Bad snap. Incomplete for Davis. Could have been a big negative play for LSU, but it will end up at third and short. We see a lot of blue shirts on the other side of the line tonight. Yeah, an exchange problem here right off the bat. Rohan Davey on the low snap. That's an athletic play just to pick that ball up in the backfield. Almost completes it outside. Another look. That snap is low into the left. And again, you get an idea of the athleticism at the quarterback position by Rohan Davey. Two tight ends, two backs. Davis probing, and Dominic Davis has the first down at the 37. I'll show you this Illinois defense 
pretty good in terms of sacks and turnovers. Washington, Potter, Moore has played the best over the last few games, and O'Brien up front. Main man, 42, Jerry Schumacher. He leads this team in tackles and sacks, second team All-Big Ten. And on the corners, Wilson and Morton are key players tonight because they play so much good man-to-man -man coverage, it allows the pressure to come from guys like Jerry Schumacher at the middle linebacker spot. On first and ten, another Dominic Davis carry. It's three of them tonight. Out to the 41, Ty Myers made the tackle. Opening drives this year, you see six touchdowns in 12 opening drives, but LSU, David, has also scored four of its last five games on the very first drive. Yeah, LSU is missing LeBrand and Tofield, their big, powerful tailback, but this is a great surface for Dominic Davis, the backup tailback. Dead ball, personal foul on the offense. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run, second down. So the pushing and shoving after the play got a little too heated on the Tigers' side. Nick Saban's team will now face first and very long. Second and very long, I beg your pardon. This will be the first time we'll see LSU spread him out a little bit with three receivers. Motion was Clayton. Trying to swing it out to Davis, and it was nearly going back the other way for a Michael Hall pick six. A Rohan Davy is lucky to get this one back. Now, Michael Hall, number eight for Illinois, comes in in nickel situations. LSU tries to spread Illinois out. Great break, great anticipation on that ball to the outside. And Rohan Davy gets lucky on this one. Davis has only caught three passes all year, so not as a significant a part of the offense throwing to the backs as you'll see with Illinois. Really good on third down, but not third and 21. Whistles before the inside handoff. No play. And it looked like some early movement from LSU along the offensive front. No play. Dead ball. False start. Offense. The third down. The referee from the Big 12, Steve Yuschek, a retired school teacher. It's been a while since both of these teams have played, Mike. I mean, you have to go back to early December for LSU, and Illinois hasn't played since Thanksgiving Day. That was Steven Peterman, the sophomore left guard, David, who started pulling a second too early. LSU would need one of those big plays, but the indication on the third and 21 with the inside handoff was settle into the game. Let's not try to make a big play, thus a big mistake. But they will throw it now. Downfield for Reed. Incomplete. Against the zone, Muhammad Abdullah was coming over. Christian Morton had the coverage. And the orange and blue folks have reason to cheer on the opening drive. Yeah, believe me, Josh Reed saw Abdullah making the break. And Josh Reed was not able to follow that ball in the air all the way to the catch. Was overthrown. But he was looking at Abdullah. And both of these safeties for Illinois are big-time hitters, very physical in the secondary. Eugene Wilson, who averages 10 a punt return, ready for Donnie Jones' left-footed kick. A wobbler taken from the 42. About 10 return yards. And Trev Falk will be in on a lot of tackles tonight. The linebacker made the play. Illinois brings it out for the last time. Kurt Kittner starts at Illinois. No quarterbacks won more games in the history of the Fighting Illini. See those 66 career touchdown passes, 23 of them this season. And David, what I like about him, as you talked about at the beginning, in a pro-style offense, he makes good decisions. Oh, he makes great decisions. He's a four-year starter. There isn't a blitz or a defensive scheme that he hasn't seen. And what's so tough about him, Mike, we talked about at the top, he's a great deep ball thrower. But if you play him soft in the secondary, he's patient enough to take balls underneath and inter intermediate routes. Comfortable with moving the chain. Big toss for Lloyd. Incomplete. 
no flag. They go right after the LSU secondary. Ryan Clark, the safety, helping on coverage. He says, hi, I'll be here all night. A Lloyd had James beat. James is the cornerback, number five. And he may be underestimated Lloyd's deep speed a little bit. Good thing for James that Clark came over, and that was borderline. There was some contact there by Ryan Clark, and this could have easily been called the other way. Flag could have come out. Four receivers, one back, second and ten, but flag stops the play. We talked about the long layoff for LSU. It's been even longer for Illinois. Dead ball. Ball start. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Last game, 40 days ago on Thanksgiving. Ron Turner's offense, in addition to Kittner, the men who handle the ball, Rocky Harvey, the senior, starts for the injured Antonio Harris, who will play. Carrie Davis can catch it and run it. Young and Lloyd can both stretch the field. Up front, Kulaga, the left guard, Butkus, and then the right tackle, Pachos, all Big Ten performers. Complete to Lloyd. No, nope, incomplete. It popped out, and the umpire says incomplete. Third down coming up. Now, this is a good ball from Kittner. Quick slant, maybe throwing a little bit behind him, but a physical play by number 33, Demetrius Hookfin. A nice close by the cornerback. Hookfin 33 and James 5, the two corners, will be picked on tonight. They have been all year in the second half of the season. They've stood tall. Against pressure, time for Kittner. Miscommunication. The receiver, Moorhead, never broke free. And Kittner 0 for 3 on the opening drop. Illinois, nice job of picking up the free safety blitz. Ryan Clark was coming, but Moorhead got caught up in the route. He's making a move inside and trying to take it back outside. Couldn't get around Hookman. Senior Steve Fitz, the all-time punter, will kick to Dominic Davis. No one's had more punts or a higher average in their Illinois career. They're caught by Davis, a 33-yard punt. Six plays, two, three, and out. No score. Rohan Davies settles in and comes back on the field. Back at the Nokia Sugar Bowl in the Superdome. No score between Illinois, 13th in the final BCS ranking, or 8th, I should say, in the final BCS, and LSU was number 13. The final numbers totaled up. This drive starts from the 22. Davey to the air. That's Clayton. Michael Clayton, the true freshman. 14 to the 36, a first down, and Here's our Taco Bell game solutions for the night, David. For Illinois, they have to penalize LSU defensively by playing risky on the outside. Make them pay with the deep ball. And for Illinois on defense, turn up the heat on Davey. you got to get pressure on Rohan Davey in the pocket or he'll find his big play receivers down the field. LSU has got to protect Rohan Davey. And defensively, they got to make sure that Kittner doesn't hit him with the deep ball. We saw that early on. Kittner took a shot down the field on the very first play. The first down carry for Davis. He's hit by Jerry Schumacher and cleaned up by Terrell Washington, the defensive end. After the first down, we'll have second and 11. And you see the line where LSU has to go. Our first and 10 brought to you today by Monster.com. LSU offense, better passing than running the ball. Threw for almost 300 yards a game, second to Florida in the Southeastern Conference. Davies toss is complete, two yards shy of the first down. That's the second catch for Michael Clayton. That was on Eugene Wilson. Michael Clayton, the true freshman, and he looks nothing like a true freshman. This guy is one of the smoothest young athletes that you'll see in college football on that last route, an out route. Beautiful cut, and the ball arrived perfectly on time from Rohan Davy. Josh Reed gets all the attention. If you were talking about speed, guy to stretch the field, Clayton's the better option than Reed. 
and Davies used both this year for big numbers. Third and a couple. And a play action throw. And drop by the tight end, Joe DiMaggio. The senior from Crowley, Louisiana, had only two receptions all year. Now, this was a super play by Rohan Davey. The blitz is going to come off the left side. Bobby Jackson, number two. Rohan Davey throws off his back foot, and he delivers it out in the flat in great shape for DiMaggio. DiMaggio has to make that play. So the corner, Eugene Wilson goes back to get Donnie Jones' second punt. They're caught after a 39-yard punt. Illinois takes over the 15. Kurt Kittner on the field when you come back to New Orleans. World, Nokia, connecting people. Dodge, you can take life as it comes or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge, Michelob Amber Bach, rich in color, smooth in taste. Touchstone Pictures, The Count of Monte Cristo, coming to theaters near you. And Tostito Scoops, the dip lover's chip. Dig in. Wind chill in the 20s has not deterred the folks from enjoying the New Orleans nightlife this week. First and 10 for Kittner. The pass is deflected at the line of scrimmage. And incomplete. Greg Jarvis Green might have gotten that knockdown. He's their best defensive lineman with Kipps, a former tight end, Dawson, and Lavalle up front. The linebackers, Jeremy Lawrence is good, but Trev Falk and Brady James are first team all SEC. They are the best. And as we mentioned, the concern guy is five, Damian James. He's playing better, but he's a safety. Hook Finn on the other side is a good corner. They might go after five a lot tonight. Just a couple of yards on the carry. Third and eight coming up after the run for Davis. And here's Dr. Jerry Punch. Uh, Michael, every coach likes to give his players some rest, but how much rest can you have before you get a little bit rusty? Take a look at the two teams that have played their final game of the year. You know, LSU played December 8th, 23 days ago, but Illinois played their last game back on November 22nd. It has been 39 days since they have played five and a half weeks. And with that passing offense, you figure the rust might be a little more noticeable. Blitz coming. Hitner eluded it. Pass was knocked down anyway. Ryan Clark, the free safety, knocked it down. But Kittner had to move in the pocket because of Trev Falk. Well, Falk and the free safety, Ryan Clark, were coming on a blitz. And they timed the snap of the ball perfectly. Here comes Falk, number seven, first team all SEC. And number two, Ryan Clark going up high. Now, Kittner has been very tough to sack on the season. Only 13 sacks this offensive line has given up. But you can get close to him, and you can try to disrupt him in the pocket. Not a good kick by Fitz. Davis on the run at the 50. Returns it to the 43. A punt of 32, a return of seven. Great field position for Davis and the LSU offense when we come back to the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Sugar Bowl. At Nick Saban's last job, head coach Michigan State, he went up against Illinois five times, won them all. 2-0 head-to-head against Ron Turner. That's when Ron Turner inherited a very poor team. They since turned around to get here tonight. That's starting field position. Davis lost the ball, but he got it back. A loss of a couple of yards. Dominic Davis, who's had only 75 carries. We cannot emphasize enough the loss of LeBrandy Tofield. He was the horse for this team. Yeah, well, watch number 55, Brett Cotter, get in. And the ball was just dropped just before contact. Joe Beavis initially made the hit to shake the football loose. LSU once again lucky to get the football back. There's Tofield, 992 yards this season, 19 touchdowns. Tough inside runner. They're going to miss that tonight. Second and a dozen. Schumacher on the blitz up the middle. Complete to Clayton. To the 40. We'll have third and a long six coming up. Well, Illinois, true to form, has come out with the blitz package against Nick Saban and Rohan Davey. But watch Rohan Davey. He's great at using his size against the blitz. Schumacher, number 42, takes it low, and Davey just retreats, uses his size to get the football off. 
remember what Schumacher told us. If I got a chance at Davey, I'm going low. Because I've seen him hit high and take guys for a ride. He, he looks a lot like Dante Culpepper with that size. Third and six, more pressure. And it's complete underneath Clayton. It looks like he's just shy of the first down, but I'm sure we'll have a measurement. Christian Morton made the tackle. Clayton has all four grabs for LSU. And we're seeing a generous helping of safety blitz from Illinois. Abdullah comes on the free safety blitz. And number five, Christian Morton breaks. Talented true freshman steps through the tackle. Morton usually a pretty tough tackler. These cornerbacks are not only great cover guys, Mike, but they're solid tacklers on the outside, typical. He got a great spot there and got the first down. So it's been Clayton thus far. Nothing from Reed yet. Davies looking long for Reed. There he is. Josh Reed out of bounds at the 15. An 18 yard pickup of another first down. Huge key for the game. Can LSU buy a couple extra seconds? These cornerbacks are great latching on you for two or three seconds. But you see Josh Reed. Extra time for Davey in the pocket. He comes free down the field against number 28, Eugene Wilson. Wilson led the country in pass breakups. And what a ball to the outside from Davey. Official stop play here for a second. You see those eye-popping numbers. Only two games this year where he did not go over 100 yards. Instead, One against Ole Miss in the SEC title game. He's uh, winking and in conversation with Eugene Wilson. Well, Josh Reed had the, <laughs> the most prolific single season in the history of major conference football. Over 1,700 yards through the air. There's been no bad, bad blood, no inflammatory comments. These guys have gotten along at the common events this week. Davis explores the left side, but only a yard or two there. Left second and eight coming up. And what I talked about before is now we're inside the red zone. And this was the area where Tofield was so good at 6 feet 225. Not that Dominic Davis isn't big. He's 5'10", 211, but doesn't have that pop in there like LeBrandon did. Uh, Tofield makes your play calling a lot more simple in third and short and goal line situations. And you look at the red zone offense for LSU, number 22, huge part of that game. Three receivers for second and eight. Jarrell Myers, first and goal, LSU. That's the junior from Houston who made the catch. Not good news for Illinois because Davey has come out in rhythm. He's hot right now. Two-step, three-step drop there. And just lets it go inside. Beautifully placed ball to Myers. And LSU is finding a rhythm. Davey four of four on this drive. Solomon Lee in at the fullback to block for Davis. Hurtling forward. Still climbing. Touchdown. somebody else on the ground. Dominic Davis does just that. First point to the Nokia Sugar Bowl to LSU. The touchdown, it was apparently not a touchdown. Now Dominic Davis had the big touchdown to put the SEC championship game away, but watch the right knee. He doesn't score on that play. The ball does not break the plane. A first down call, first and goal. LSU fortunate. They jump on top. And you would assume that the officials saw him rolling over the back of Muhammad Abdullah. And that does count until your knee comes down. If you're laying on somebody and going forward, that's okay. And to Davis's credit, he kept those legs alive and 
Ref thought the knee did not touch. Eugene Wilson's going to take this from a yard deep. No, under at the 14. That's Walter Moreham, the backup linebacker on the tackle. So Rohan Davey was 4 of 4 on that last drive, 6 of 10 for the game. Kurt Kittner's opened up 0 for 5 thus far here. Yeah, during the break, Kurt Kittner getting a lot of throws in on the sideline. We talked about the long layoff. Probably doesn't like the feel of the ball coming off his hand. And on the other side of the field, Rohan Davey looking a lot like he did in the Alabama game earlier this season, the turnaround game, when he threw for over 500 yards. A run with Rocky Harvey, the senior. Pinballs forward as he gets out to the 17-yard line. Thursday night, the granddaddy of them all. Ken Dorsey in Miami. Take on the Heisman winner, Eric Crouch in Nebraska. The Rose Bowl presented by AT&T, the BCS National Championship game on your exclusive home of the Bowl Championship Series, ABC. Now, Mike, a lot of talk about whether Nebraska should be in that game or not, but of the one-loss teams, I think they clearly have the best shot to beat Miami. This Illinois team, also a one-loss squad from the season, but having trouble getting going against LSU tonight. That's Harvey again for just a yard. Kyle Kipps made the tackle. Neither one of these teams really well known for their running game. And Illinois got over 1,200 yards combined from Harvey and Harris. They need the running game to keep Kittner clean in the pocket, number one, but number two to set up a wonderful play action game that Ron Turner loves to go to. Three receivers, one back, one tight end. Kittner on the run of first down and more. Slides for it at the 33-yard line. Kurt will not win many 40-yard dash races, <laughs> but he does have effective feet when flush. And, Mike, you talked about his decision-making. A big part of a quarterback's decision-making process in the pocket is to know when to break towards the line of scrimmage and to give up on your routes. Three receivers to the right, and not a lot of movement from those receivers to help out Kittner. So Kittner's just going to pull it down, and he makes a decisive move back to the line of scrimmage. That was the difference on the first down run. Jarvis Green almost got there. Harvey. Rocky gets out to the 37. I mentioned he's the senior out of Chicago, Illinois. Rocky Harvey this year under 600 yards rushing, and really his thinnest rushing performance during his four-year Illinois career. He's fourth on the all-time list just under 2,700 yards. Yeah, when you rush for over 2,600 yards in a career, you can run the football. He's a great change of pace back when Harris is healthy, and he's very valuable in the pass game. Second and sixth throw. Good job of holding on as Ryan Clark brought some heavy heat after Carrie Davis's reception. This LSU defense is not an easy defense to run the football against. And as a result, the short passing game for Illinois is hurting right now. The big guys, three all Big Ten performers up front, protecting Kittner in the pocket. He dumps it underneath, and Clark is there to lay a smack on Kerry Davis. Still looking for his first completion. Still looking for his first completion. But a flag comes in here. Randall Gay got there early. Randall Gay read it all the way. Randall Gay had excellent recognition. Quick slant. Looking for Moorhead, and the right arm does come around the waist. That's a good call. Great play with the left hand, but the right hand arrives early. Gary Gibbs, former Oklahoma head coach, is the defensive coordinator for Nick Saban. Gary was out of football for some five years, now has hopped back in with a defensive-minded head coach in Saban. Pittner looking long for Lloyd. Nearly intercepted by Clark. Clark. 
Ryan Clark gets great depth at the free safety position. And Kittner's looking for all the money down the middle to Lloyd. If he gets this ball up a little earlier and lets Lloyd stretch out underneath it, he might have been able to beat the safety. Well, that's a tremendous athletic play by Ryan Clark to get back, get the depth, and make the play on the football. No completions to a wide receiver, just that little one-yard pass before. They spread him out and try to get Harvey inside, but Lavalle was wise to it. Gary Davis carrying Chad Lavalle, the sophomore from Marksville, Louisiana. Lavalle's had a great season at the defensive tackle position. He has a lot of quickness. You look at the LSU defense there, led the conference in interceptions, and Lavalle with his ability to get into the pocket as a defensive tackle at a lot of quarterback hurries contributed to all those interceptions. Incomplete. The pressure coming from the side once again. That time it was Marcus Spears. And Kittner's one of eight. Just a one-yard completion to carry Davis. Nothing to the wide receivers. This one's on the pass rush, though. Yeah, watch the top of the screen. This should have been a holding call on Pasho 79. I mean, he's grabbing Marcus Spears' jersey with two hands. That's a true freshman. Number 89, converted tight end. Got a couple balls on the other side of the line of scrimmage. And boy, is he going to be talented for Nick Saban in the future. Fitz with the punt. Got a great bounce at the one. Fabulous kick. Wow. He had no help down there from any of the gunners. And as I mentioned, the best punter in Illinois history. 46 yards of punting perfection. The cards are falling right as a punter when you get this kind of hop. Dominic Davis with the bluff. 90 degree angle turn by the football. Every now and then you need a break like that when you're punting. Long field now for Rohan Davy, the senior from Miami, Florida. His throw to Josh Reed. For the 17, he picks up a first down. And you are right, David, they are really in rhythm. Here's our AT&T team comparison. Look at these teams in the national stats. Two of the higher scoring teams of the 115 in Division I. And they both do it better in the air than on the ground. Joe DiMaggio, the tight end who dropped one earlier, lines up very often as the fullback to lead for the tailback, Davis. Just a couple of yards for Dominic there. For the folks who haven't seen Illinois, let's talk about their defense. Their coordinator is new, Mike Cassidy. And boy, he's really brought Ron Turner's defense a different look. Now, you talk about a turnaround. This defense was ranked 113th out of 114 teams a year ago. And Mike Cassidy brought an attacking style of defense. They'll blitz from all levels at the linebacker positions and the secondary. And really, the keys to this defense are the cornerbacks. Without the cornerbacks playing the way they have played, Cassidy would not be able to unleash this blitz package. Reed to the 31. First down. Not uncommon to say first down after you say Josh Reed completion. Now he is a special route runner. And he comes out of his break so quickly on that last play. Just a quick slant. He has the speed to separate from smaller defenders, defensive backs, and the strength out of the slot to go up against stronger linebackers with his upper body, bump him off course. 94 catches this year. 75 of them were for first down. Davy underneath to Robert Royal, the tight end. To the 39-yard line. So the story early here is Illinois' corners, the highly touted corners, and the rest of their pass defense being taken advantage of by Davy, who's picking them apart seven consecutive completions. Well, Davy's red hot, and he's, as we said, right in step, right in rhythm, 
perfectly in sync on the timing routes. And if you're going to beat this defense, you have to beat this defense from time to time before the pressure gets there. He's throwing the timing routes very well. Two tight ends, one back. Dominic Davis. First hit was made by Muhammad Abdullah, but it's enough for another LSU first down. Dominic Davis, as we said, doesn't bring the power aspect to the LSU running game that LeBron and Tofield does, but he is a tough back. Goes about 215 pounds, would rather make you miss than run over the top of you. And what a game he had, especially in the second half of the SEC championship against Tennessee. 78 hard-earned yards. And Dominic Davis, one of the MVPs on this offense in the 2001 season. Davey. Complete. Eric Edwards came in the game. He has only two catches on the year. Now, Rohan Davy just didn't have quite enough time. Ty Myers was coming on a blitz, got there early. Davy has a split second longer. He has time for Edwards to come open. Watch Edwards here break into the corner out. And Davy had to get the ball up just a little bit too early. One of those things you see in bowl games, the pressure from Illinois, but Joe DiMaggio, only two catches this year. Eric Edwards, only two catches this year at the tight end spot. Both have been throwing a ball in the first half. Pressure up the middle. Davey hung in there, and Edwards couldn't hang on. <laughs> but once again, Joe Beavis, number 33, turned loose on the blitz. And Rowan Davey at 245 pounds sidestepped him. I mean, this guy is incredible, Mike. He goes over 240 pounds. And I haven't ever seen a quarterback with that kind of size have the mobility he does. He doesn't look to run the football downfield, but boy, he does a great job with his mobility escaping the rough. This is third and ten. Here's the pressure again. That time stopped. Fareed! Almost looked like if he would have kept running, he might have a chance to bring it in. You're absolutely right, Mike. He didn't keep his deep speed. You hear wide receiver coaches talk about keeping your deep speed. I think he was surprised at how Rohan Davies snapped this ball off. I mean, that was an incredible throw from the back foot by Davey, and I don't think Reed was feeling that Davey was going to him with the football. Donnie Jones to punt. Good kick. Going to let it go, and this one takes a great bounce. Covered by LeVar Justin at the six. Two excellent pinning jobs by the punter. The 29th Annual American Music Awards with Brooks and Dunn, Cher, Lenny Kravitz, Kid Rock, Shaggy, Britney Spears, who's from Louisiana, and more. Hosted by Jenny McCarthy and Sean P. Diddy Combs, Wednesday at 8 Eastern, 7 Central on ABC. This will be the final play of the first quarter with just five seconds left in Illinois trailing 7-0. Here's Dr. Jerry Punch. Hey, guys, in the last possession, Kirk Kittner's got his right hand bent back on a blitz by Ryan Clark. He knocked the ball, and Kittner's hand back. They were concerned about him being able to grip the football. They even had backup quarterback Dustin Ward warming up on the sidelines. Kittner told trainer Al Martin, now, I'm okay, but they're concerned about his grip in the right hand. All right, Jerry, we'll watch him as he uh, pulls out from center. There's a clock problem, as you saw gone from five seconds to 20 so we'll get it straightened out here and now it is correct so Kittner's hand is bothering him Antonio Harris who has a, a broken hand that is in a cast is in the lineup and here he goes He's got about three Jarvis Green and Jeremy Lawrence made the play. And that'll bring us to the end of the first quarter. 
a quarter controlled by LSU. 122 yards for LSU, 30 for Illinois, and Kittner just one of eight for one yard. Another slow Illinois start, but the Illini fans are used to that. 7-0 after one. ABC Sports presentation of the Nokia Sugar Bowl. We'll continue after this message and a word from your ABC station. Watching ABC's coverage of the Nokia Sugar Bowl. We start the second quarter of the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Illinois facing second down and about seven. And Kurt Kittner trying to find a receiver. Nearly a spectacular grab by Walter Young, the junior. So Kittner continues to struggle. Just a one-yard completion to one of his running backs, Cary Davis. Other than that, he's missed his other eight throws. While Rohan Davy David Norrie has come out sharp tonight. Well, he has come up sharp. And his offensive line has given him those extra counts in the backfield. On the other hand, Kittner is not getting the time. And LSU, along the defensive line, is doing a great job of getting their hands up against the quick passing game. Be careful down here. Third and seven. Kittner throws the slant. Young can't come up with it. Randall Gay on the coverage. We've seen this a bunch. Kurt Kittner's slow starts. Purdue, Ohio State, Penn State come to mind. Yeah, they've come from behind quite a bit, five times this season to be exact. But these cornerbacks, these much maligned cornerbacks from LSU are playing tight on the outside. And they have really been the, the difference, the story so far for this LSU defense. Dominic Davis averages 14 yards per punt return. Good kick. 48 yards. No, where to go for Davis. The starting linebacker, Joe Beavis, the tackle. The field position battle being won by LSU. A flag in it on this play as well. And we'll see where it will go. Probably moving the Tigers into Illini territory. Yeah, it looked like LSU was successful in invading an Illinois player there after the whistle. Personal foul on a kicking team. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. Rohan Davies doing well enough. They give him better field position. Tigers inside the 40 when you come back to the dome. Our satellite provider. Certainly does have a Baton Rouge feel to it here in the Superdome tonight. Outstanding field position for LSU after the personal foul. Davis almost eluded the tackle behind the line of scrimmage. No gain. Schumacher on the play. Rohan Davy, hot start. Didn't get to finish the SEC championship game against Tennessee. Not that hit, but that one right there started on the very first drive of the first quarter. Then he came back in the second. Kevin Burnett. Scramble, knocked him down. Davy had to leave the game. Actually watched the conclusion of the SEC title game in a hospital in Atlanta. And the man on the right, Matt Mock, came in, a freshman who used to be a catcher in the Cubs system, and closed out the upset win over Tennessee. Here's Reed. First down, Josh Reed at the 25. Here's Dr. Jerry Punch. Michael Davies' injuries were to the left front ribs. Eighth, ninth, and tenth rib tips here, which have been very sore since that game on December 8th. On that night, he was wearing a flak shirt, basically like an endo shirt that has pockets to slide little, little bitty pads inside. That didn't work. Tonight, they have the full Monty out here. Basically, it's, it's a flak jacket, very, very rigorous to protect those left front ribs. Its color is black, but it doesn't have a slimming effect. <laughs> Rohan still <laughs> is more nimble than he looks. Here's Davis. He's at the 10. He's at the 5. Touchdown, Tigers!
Capri has stopped play for a second and is walking over to Nick Saban on the LSU sideline to explain something to the coach. What play call by Jimbo Fisher, the offensive coordinator. He's explaining something about uh, fans throwing something on the field. And Nick is saying, go ahead, make an announcement upstairs. Let's go back to that touchdown, though, by Davis. Now, we talked about a great play call. Davis finishes it off. A couple fans throwing some things on the field, and we've seen enough of that at the NFL level so far this year. Nick actually used the referee's microphone to say something to the fans. Uh, just a straight inside handoff to Davis, and you get a look at his speed. Three straight years, over 1,000 all-purpose yards, and he's a game-breaker in his own right. Junior kicker John Corbello getting set for the extra point. Not only what we saw in Cleveland, as they now explain to Ron Turner, but we also saw it in this building on a Monday night when the Rams were in here and the fans got upset as the New Orleans comeback was short-circuited. Yeah, tough to penalize either team because you know, we have a neutral field situation here. Tough to tell whether those cups and drinks are coming from the Illini or LSU fans or others. Corbello blocked and back the other way for a possible two-point conversion. It is still a live ball. The defense can score two if they bring it back, but it's brought down. Great pressure right away from Terrell Washington, who blocked a couple of kicks earlier this year. Three of them, as a matter of fact. Now, Terrell Washington, number 85. Watch him come right up the gut. Swims by Ben Wilkerson, the center. Great extension. That extra point hit him between the eight and the five. He blocked an extra point against Indiana earlier this year. No points, though. It is 13-0 LSU over Illinois on the Dominic Davis touchdown. This ABC Sports exclusive brought to you by... Sears. Only Sears has the brands you want at the prices you need. Sears. Where else? Aflac. Ask about it at work. Honda. A versatile family of cars, minivans, and SUVs. And AT&T. Let your business, let your life be boundless. Felt like we were outside Tiger Stadium tonight as you came in. The Baton Rouge field, they were even the, despite the 40 degree temperatures and wind chills in the 20s and cold rain, the tailgating, which is as good at LSU as it is any place in the land, started well as soon as people woke up from last night. Great kick by Corbello, and Eugene Wilson can't do anything with it. Some people didn't have to wake up at all. <laughs> <laughs> they approached this day from the long end. Uh, taking one more look at the replay. Watch Derek Strong, number 98, come and run right past Dominic Davis. And we talked about a turf surface being a great surface for Davis. This is only the second game LSU has played inside this year. The other game coming in the SEC championship game, and that was a heck of a game for number 31. This is LSU's 11th Sugar Bowl appearance. They've never had a double-digit lead until now. Rocky Harvey runs for just a couple of yards. It'll be second and eight for Illinois. Need to get to the 30 for a first down. And first and 10 is brought to you by Computer Associates. Mr. Nori, what is wrong with the Illini offense? Now, four possessions, four punts, including three three and outs. And Illinois has to get some sort of running game here or Kittner's going to be feeling pressure all night. Carrie Davis took that one out across the 26-yard line. This will be third and short and more manageable. They did have a couple of first downs picked up on that second drive, but you also see the bad field position. Own 16, own 14, own 6, and now their own 20. And what a shocker with Nick Saban. I mean, playing solid defense, field position, 
You, know, you can ask Tennessee about that type of game because Tennessee was victimized, knocked out of a trip to Pasadena. Walter Young in motion. Hitner to throw. Knocked down. Lavalle again. Well, Chad Lavalle has had a big impact, and this uh, LSU defense maligned during the year has forced Kittner one of 11 to start the game. Well, usually your defensive ends are the guys that bring the pressure on the pass rush. We talked about Lavalle, all the success he's had, all the quarterback here hurries over the course of the season. Tremendous penetration and quickness off the football. Fits to kick. He's been the best thing about Illinois tonight. That's 54 yards of punt. Dominic Davis dancing for space. Looking for room and took it out to the 45. A flag comes in and could be on the Tigers in a race. Some of that 26 yard return. It'll come back probably to around the 30 yard line. Well, we have a second. Time for the half lap. Trivia question. Who was the last Illinois quarterback to take the Illini to a major bowl? And how do we define major bowl for argument's sake here? Let's say Rose, Sugar, Orange, Fiesta, and Cotton. Okay. And I know the answer to that one. Well, you should, and we'll explain why later. Hey, come on. You're going to have fun here or what? It's that might be the first time this year. That might be the first time this year <laughs> that I've come up with one of those. It's New Year's night in New Orleans. Let's have some fun. <laughs> well, he's not. Oh, I won't give it away. See, Kurt Kittner went right back for that ice pack. Jerry told us about it earlier. That hand is bothering him. First and ten. Endeavoring Henderson in the backfield on the play action. The completion to Jarrell Myers, the junior, for a first down. They take Davis out for a blow and fake it to Henderson. And Myers gets him 24 yards down the field. Yeah, Myers is one of the top four pass catchers in LSU history. You talk about a great third receiver, and that's a well-executed post corner route. Once again, Rohan Davey untouched in the pocket and another tight throw to the outside. Myers at 64 catches as a true freshman, 68 in the last two years. Davey deep drop. See, they couldn't bring him down, but he should not have thrown that. Schumacher nearly had an interception. The pressure came from the strong safety, Bobby Jackson. You know, we talked about Dante Culpepper and how Rohan Davey has that size and, and presence in the pocket. Look at the top of the screen. Bobby Jackson, one of the best safety blitzers in the Big Ten, gets into Davey low. Davey has the strength to still get the ball off. Schumacher stretching out. Some great effort for his Illinois defense down the field. Shoes got a bunch of folks here. 51 family members have made the trip to New Orleans tonight. Flag thrown. Dead ball. Ball start. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat second down. This game two of the Bowl Championship Series. Game three tomorrow night. The FedEx Orange Bowl from Miami. Rex Grossman will not start for Florida. Taking on Maryland, the Cinderella champions of the ACC. Live at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Here on ABC, the home of the Bowl Championship Series. Startling numbers in the passing game. Picking up the pressure, Reed. Couldn't hang on. It's a matchup that would have worked well for LSU, but Reed couldn't make the catch. A yeah, rare miss by Rohan Davey. Josh Reed cut his route short on the outside, read the blitz. Wide receivers have to read the blitz just like quarterbacks do, and they have to be on the same page. You look at the receiving stats tonight, they've been on the same page quite a bit. Illinois' corners are very good, but they do give up a lot of passing yards. Seventh in the Big Ten and 82nd nationally. So they're not complete shutdown guys. Davey had time. Goes down the middle and it's caught by Reed at the 22. At 
Jets completions of 26 and 28 yards on this drive. Rohan Davies arm strength made Eugene Wilson, number 28, look like he was standing in his tracks here. Watch how quickly the ball gets on number 25. That's one of the best cover corners in the country, and he could not react because of the arm strength of Rohan Davey. Pretty good ball placement as well. Illinois has to be very careful here. Davey caught by Corey Webster. He was down at the 16. So let's think about some trends that we've seen here thus far today. SEC against the Big Ten. South Carolina jumped out to the huge lead on Ohio State, 28-0. Ohio State charged back, but South Carolina won that game. Then in the first game of our triple header, the Capital One Florida Citrus Bowl, the Tennessee had its way with Michigan, moved the ball easily on offense. They say that the speed of the SEC is not as big a difference against the Big Ten teams of this generation. But so far today, we've seen the SEC clearly have the upper hand. Second and four, it's Davis. Dominic Davis, three touchdowns in 20 minutes. Corbello almost had that one blocked by Washington again, but it's good. And they're really good. He's mad, but he's really happy. The Nokia Sugar Bowl is like a home game for LSU. And they look right at home in the Dome tonight. Schofield not being in, but Dominic Davis has had an unbelievable start to the game. LSU bowl record, four-yard touchdown run, 25-yard touchdown run, and here a 16-yarder to cap off a six-play, 69-yard drive. Dominic Davis, three rushing touchdowns, best bowl performance by a running back in Tiger history. And he's got another 40 minutes to go tonight. Greg Lewis awaits for the kickoff by Corbello. It is short to the other side. Goes out of bounds, so that's a break for Illinois. They'll get good field position. Now watch Steven Peterman, the sophomore left guard. He's going to get a great seal block. This run is designed to go to the left side. We talked about the turf surface being a great surface for Dominic Davis, and he cuts it back to the right, uses great vision. And as you said, Mike, he's having a heck of a night early. He's uh, tied the most touchdowns ever scored in a bowl game by an LSU player. Wendell Davis once had a three-touchdown game in the 87 Gator Bowl against South Carolina. All right, so here's Kittner, one of 11, one-yard passing. His team's had the ball for five possessions. They punted all five. Finally in the hands of Brandon Lloyd on the reverse. 13 yards, first down, out near midfield, and here's Dr. Jerry Punch. Guys, LSU was concerned about the durability of Dominic Davis coming into the night. He had been injured throughout the year. He missed the entire Utah State game with a knee injury. The fourth quarter of Ole Miss with the ankle injury and all of Alabama with an ankle injury. The question was, would he be durable? Would he step up and play tonight with LeBrandon Tofield out? I think he answered all those questions in the first 20 minutes. I'll say, Jerry. Outstanding performance. A little speedier back than Tofield. After the third Illinois first down of the night, Kittner knocked down and incomplete. He almost had a reception of his own pass that for a second was looking like an interception by Jeremy Lawrence. Yeah, Jeremy Lawrence, the strong side linebacker, and he was headed 45 yards the other way for a touchdown if Kittner doesn't break this up. Gets his hands up, and Kittner makes a play on the football. Once again, use that left hand to throw the ball to the ground. Heady play by the four-year starter. Lawrence comes out as an extra DB comes on for LSU. They blitz Gay. The cutback run by Davis gets it out across midfield. 
to the 48. Trev Falk made that tackle. First team all SEC linebacker. Now, Illinois is in a danger zone right now. And Kurt Kittner and his offensive teammates have to respond with the drive. LSU in a comfort zone. A lot of fans here playing at home. And in New Orleans, you get the momentum going against you. And it could be a long night for Illinois. As Illinois fans are waiting and watching just like those guys. Third and seven. It's incomplete. <laughs> High shot for Aaron Moorhead. His dad, Emory Moorhead, played in the National Football League. Cousin of Brad Doherty. Well, Kurt North Kittner's Carolina. right hand may be bothering him. That's usually a ball that Kittner puts on the numbers. The ball sailing on him and one of the first indications of a hand injury getting to a quarterback is the ball sailing. Well, the bad news for Illinois is that Steve Fitz has been their MVP tonight. He'll give LSU a long field for the 35-yard punt. Got an answer? So far, no. Watching the Nokia Sugar Bowl on ABC Sports. As good a pass catch combo as the Big Ten has, but thus far, Kurt Kittner has just one completion in 13 attempts, still continuing to ice that right hand that Jerry Punch told us earlier was bent back as he was being rushed by LSU. Brandon Lloyd has only touched it on the 14 yard reverse last drop. LSU leading 20 to nothing will work out of the shotgun from inside its own 50. Pressure on Davey and this pass incomplete. It was intended for Michael Clayton. Well, here is the Aflac trivia question answer. Last Illinois quarterback to take the Illini to a major bowl game was Jack Trudeau in the 1984 Rose Bowl against UCLA, the Big Ten champs. They went up against UCLA and lost the quarterback for the Bruins that day, current University of Washington coach Rick Neuheisel, and the backup quarterback for UCLA that day, David Norrie. Yeah, I had a good seat for that game. <laughs> <laughs> On the run, Davis gets it out to the 18-yard line. Washington on the tackle. Neuheisel was the most valuable player of that game. Along with Don Rogers, the great free safety, the late Don Rogers, and and looking back to that Illinois team, the 83 team, that was the first team in the history of the Big Ten to beat all other nine teams in the Big Ten. It's one of those years where they played everybody and went with one less non-conference game. Illinois could use a three and out in the worst way. Not going to get it. Josh Reed, first down. 30-yard line. There are not many quarterbacks at the college level that can throw the ball on the move this effortlessly. Davey rolling to the right. We take a look at the receiver action downfield. An out route by Reed, and he gets into his cuts at full speed. Davey takes a little bit off the ball on the move to the right, and once again throws the ball very accurately to Reed on the sideline. 93 yards for Josh Reed on six catches. Davis got a nice block to move that seven, eight yards forward. Rodney Reed, the left tackle from West Monroe, Louisiana, pulling and knocking Illini down. Oh, it's a new year and a new season, but still the same bad attitude. Dennis Leary's back. The job starting Wednesday, January 16th, a couple of weeks from tomorrow on ABC, 9.30 Eastern, 8.30 Central. Pick up of eight, second and two. Davis again. That time will get stopped. Schumacher, 42 in blue, leading the way for Illinois, as he normally does defensively. I mentioned he has 51 family members. I flew in on the flight from Atlanta to New Orleans with him. Boy, <laughs> they had a great time. They were picked up by a limo at the family house, made it a big trip. Everyone's down here. 
The only one who's not here is his sister Katie, who's a star volleyball and basketball player for the Illini. Goes to school in Champaign as well. And Katie, Jerry wants you to know that he wishes you could be here as the uh, more talented, as he joked, older sister of the family. Third and two, pass incomplete, too high for Michael Clayton and Illinois' defense able to get LSU off the field. The Tigers are going to have to punt the ball away here, but the play calling by Jimbo Fisher, the offensive coordinator for LSU, has Illinois totally off balance. He's mixing in pass, run, shotgun, keeping Rohan Davey on the move, alive in the pocket. And this Illinois defense has not solved LSU's offensive puzzle yet in the first half. Donnie Jones set to punt. Go out of bounds, a 42-yard kick. Spins out at the 20. One of 13. Kurt Kittner's had plenty of slow starts this year. He's also had plenty of comebacks. Better get moving. Coming up at halftime, it's the Nokia $1 million challenge. You remember a couple of years ago, Joe Theismann throwing successfully, giving Bob Motorak the opportunity to win a half million dollars in the Nokia challenge. Joe's going to be throwing for Greg Jepson this year. Joe's been working and practicing. He did the Sunday night game here in New Orleans, so he's got no jet lag. We'll see if he can help a million-dollar winner tonight. Million-dollar performance by this defense so far. Howard Green stops Antonio Harris for no game. Now Howard Green has emerged in the last four games as a starter for LSU inside of the defensive tackle position, and he laid a bear hug on an Illinois ball carrier there. Very strong inside along with Lavalle. Very tough to pick up yards in between the tackles. Tried a first down run, got nothing out of it. Second and 10 for Kittner. Deloy, first reception. Ball came free, no whistle. It belongs to the Tigers. The hit was made by Trev Falk, number seven. Actually, no, that's Randall Gay coming in and stripping the football. Oh, Falk. whoa. And he gets up. There's Falk late taking Lloyd to the ground, but that was Gay that made the strip. He makes the theft, and then he makes the pickup. He yanked it away from him. They ruled it started to come out before he was down on the ground. First and goal. Davis gets back to the line of scrimmage. Ty Myers on the tackle. So the first turnover of this game would give LSU a huge advantage. Now, Randall Gay has had a great game here in the first half. Coming in as the nickel cornerback for LSU. Playing wide receivers tight on the outside. And what a play on the strip and the recover. Davis moves to the left side of the formation. And Josh Reed said, this is too screwed up, guys. I'm going to stop it right here at 4.55 first half. A smart play by Josh Reed. You know, this is not a place on the field where you can make a mistake. And Randall Gay feeling it. We'll be right back. In what the referee said. You know, Ron Turner has a very easygoing demeanor. A calm about him that I think helps this team in their comeback situations. Here was the call. Lloyd felt like he was down with possession. The officials ruled Gay was wrestling it out. Thus a live ball. Second and goal. They fake the reverse. Davy chased by Washington. Threw it away. That's one of the gifts that Rohan Davy brings to the table. Even with a big pass rusher, a defensive end. Like Terrell Washington, number 85, hanging on him. 
Rohan Davy has the size and the release point to get the ball off. And he saved the day. He, li he lives to fight another day by throwing that ball through the back of the end zone. Keeps his team alive for a third and goal situation. Four receivers, the two best, Clayton and Reed, are at the bottom of the screen. Nobody open at first. Now breaking three. Touchdown. Josh Reed. is a third choice. Davey looking to his right, checking two receivers, and Reed stays alive along the end line. Corbello adds the extra point. Not as spectacular, but similar to the Peach Bowl touchdown of last year when Davey and Reed let a come from behind win. Right now, Illinois is in the come from behind position. Big time. Sunday, 9, 8 central. There are so many things that I should say. Executive bowl win. Leads 27-0. Last year at the Peach Bowl, Rohan Davey came in, replacing Josh Booty, but a great comeback, including this back of the end zone spectacular grab by Reed. They beat Georgia Tech 28-14. to Kind of laid the foundation for this year. Davey came in as the starter with no Josh Booty to contend with for the start. Had the job from day one and has excelled all season. That play on the two-point conversion looked like a carbon copy of this last touchdown. Yep. Returnable finally for Eugene Wilson. They fake the reverse. Wilson maintains possession and takes it out to the 25-yard line. Jerry Punch. Michael, you mentioned Rohan Davey last year in the Peach Bowl. He came in in the second half in the place of Josh Booty, and the players still remember his speech in the huddle before the very first play. He looked them in the eye and said, we will win this football game. And 25 unanswered points later, they did. Josh Booty says he is our sunshine on a rainy day. Jimbo Fisher, the offensive coordinator, said that every player in the locker room for LSU had their eyes down on the floor, and there was only one player on the team could... Get those eyes back up. That was Rohan Davis. Hit new to the air. Looking deep and it's well covered. Now tries to find a back-breaking free. And it is caught by Rocky Harvey. Marquise Hill is saying, wait a minute. I'm 6'7", 285. I was covering the back. I'm not supposed to cover him 50 yards downfield. What was Marquise Hill doing? downfield for LSU. I mean, the Tigers might have wanted to substitute another cornerback in his place. <laughs> Tough for a big guy to make a play on the football looking back. You talk about a mismatch <laughs> and what a play by Rocky Harvey. Give credit to Kurt Kittner for making that throw and keeping Harvey alive. 47 yard pass and catch. About as much offense as they had to that point. Now Kittner throws for Young. Out of bounds at the two. 42, then 31 yards. Well, Illinois has come from behind five times this year, three times in the fourth quarter. Not from 27 points, but this gets Illinois right back in the game. And watch the footwork along the sideline. That was a nice play by Young. Kittner takes a fierce hit in the pocket and still delivers the ball to the outside. Great play by Young to bring in that pass with his fingertip. Hitner throws for it. Touchdown, Brian Hodges. Harvey's play started this drive. Peter Christofalakis on for the extra point. Kicker who emerged in the middle of the season. 
player of the game in Ann Arbor against Michigan. The fans from Champaign get to yell I-L-L, I-N-R, as the Illini are finally on the scoreboard. On 14 balls this year for an average of 15 per grab. A uh, significant one here might have kept Illinois in the game. Now taking a look one more time at Walter Young's catch. This followed the Rocky Harvey play. Fingertip grab, tries to stretch the ball over the goal line. And here's the touchdown. Watch Hodges block and then sneak out into the flat. Kerry Davis underneath and just enough air under that football from Kittner to get it out over number 11, Brady James, the linebacker for LSU. Illinois was on life support. They're off it, and this is a game again. Pass completions of 42, 31, and then the two-yard touchdown to the senior from Country Club Heights, Illinois, Brian Hodges. Steve Fitz to kick off. LSU does not think he can take it to the goal line. Dominic Davis from the three. With a seam. It closed quickly at the 27. John Saunders and Terry Bowden. I don't know if they've been sneaking out to take a ride on any of the roller coasters <laughs> at uh, the Disneyland Resort in California, but we will see them at halftime. I wouldn't put it past them. Here is the stat total for the big performers. Rohan Davey, his percentage has dropped off a little bit. Dominic Davis, an LSU bowl record, three touchdowns. Josh Reed pushing 100 yards here before halftime. Davis gaping hole into the clear. Got a good block downfield from Myers as well. And took it all the way to the 37-yard line. This LSU we, offense is so dangerous because they can spread you out and they can go with the power game. There is a flag on the field. The LSU hold. And a look at Dominic Davis finishing off this run. This one should come back. But more importantly, Illinois needs to solve the run game Holding for LSU. Offense. Ten-yard penalty. Front of the foul. No first down. Might have been one of the outside guys, perhaps a receiver. Yeah, it might have been Josh Reed. Let's freeze it right there. Yep. Right there, Josh Reed, and he's going to get that right hand full of jersey. And that's where the, hell, the hold came. You know, Dominic Davis is a good enough runner one-on-one -on -one to make a single defender miss. A rare mistake, a, me a rare mental mistake by Josh Reed. He doesn't need to make that block. Penalty from the spot of the foul, so it's the odd first and seven pass that's complete for a first down to Michael Clayton his fifth catch on the evening and Mike you know when you have the ability to come in with three quality wide receivers and spread a team out you have such an advantage because you can count the numbers on defense and with a guy like Dominic Davis in the backfield when the numbers are in your favor in the box go ahead and give him the ball and it's paying big dividends for LSU very effective in the three receiver, one back set that they're in right now. That time a good tackle by Jeff Ruffin, who has emerged here over the last few games. Donnie Thompson, the defensive line coach of the Illini, told me before the game down on the field that this sophomore from Aurora, Illinois, he can come out and have a two, three sack game really easily. He's that kind of a big game type of performer. Yeah, Ron Turner has a benefit of being able to rotate 10 different defenders along that front four. But this front four is getting bullied. The LSU offensive line is having a day. Quick toss. Good catch. Clayton. Good after the catch. Out to the 34-yard line. And another first down. LSU has made 18 first downs in the first 28 minutes. Rohan Davey continues to hit on all cylinders. Another timing route. And the classy true freshman Michael Clayton 
not only runs a good route, secures the catch, but some graceful running to pick up the first down upfield. The lead block of Joe DiMaggio, Devery Henderson carries this time through a shoe as he was tackled by strong safety Bobby Jackson. Al Dennis and Dan will wrap up the regular season of Monday Night Football with Ray Lewis and the Ravens hosting Randy Moss and the Vikings. Monday Night Football returns to Monday night, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on ABC. Ravens trying to defend their Super Bowl championship and if they can work their way through the AFC, they would be right back here in Superdome hosting the Super Bowl for the sixth time more than any other stadium ever. Second and nine. The 30th pass of the night for Davey is just behind Josh Reed. Now he hasn't missed many tonight. He aimed that ball a little bit because he had Josh Reed on the skinny post. Now this is a big situation for Illinois. LSU not quite in comfortable field goal position for Corbello third and nine situation and Ron Turner's team needs to keep touch here down 20 points just before the half and they are about to run their 50th play of the half that's a lot of plays in a half and a lot of time on the field for this Illinois defense 18 minutes pressure has not been a factor tonight underneath Clayton It'll be first and goal from the 10. Now the story of the first half is that the Illinois blitz package is not getting to the quarterback. They're not getting there. And with the speed of Clayton underneath on a crossing route, Rohan Davey, you give him this much time and you give Clayton time to clear underneath, it's pitch and catch. You said it, speed. That's the difference here tonight. LSU is too fast for Illinois. Davis. Got it out to the six. Tackled by Abdullah. 47 seconds. Nick has two timeouts left, and he's letting it go here. That's right, Mike. It is, it is the speed that's really showing down on the turf level there for Nick Saban. But also, this is a power performance by his offensive line. And they're blocking people up front almost every play. Davey pressured in the air. Incomplete. Robert Royal almost made a spectacular grab. That was an opportunity wasted by Illinois. And Royal was in the right place at the right time. Ty Myers, the starting linebacker, was injured. And they'll stop the game for him to come off the field. Davey gave Illinois an opportunity here to turn LSU, turn the ball over for LSU and turn the ball back into the hands of Kittner. And what a big play that would have been for an Illinois defender to come down with that in the end zone. Robert Royal saving the day for the Tigers, going up and almost making the play for the touchdown. Third and goal, see if they try Royal again. Davey, back of the end zone, Royal! Touchdown! Davey was looking to Dominic Davis up the left sideline. Threw against his body, had his body totally opened up to the left sideline, then came back to Royal. That's an unbelievable play in the pocket by Rohan Davey. I am shocked. Not shocked that LSU's on top, but they have completely dominated. They've run 53 plays, have 344 yards, and 34 points in this half. Right, that play was designed to go up the sideline to Dominic Davis. Dominic Davis is going to come out of the backfield, and he is the first choice for Rohan Davey. But watch Davey. He can't 
He doesn't even have time to get the gun loaded. His body totally opened up. And the arm strength once again. What vision by Davey to pick up Royal on his radar screen along the end line and make the play. He has had an unbelievable first half. So have these guys. <laughs> they were tired coming in here after New Year's Eve, and they're tired out with 34 points in the first half. I have a feeling it's been more than the first half for those guys. <laughs> well, Turner just saw Robert Royal catch the touchdown. <laughs> that put LSU into the Sugar Bowl record book with 34 <laughs> points and a half. You know, David, they've been here, as I mentioned, 10 times before. And they totaled in those 10 games 81 points. And some of the games were played back in the 30s when 3-2 was one of the scores of an LSU Sugar Bowl. Only one team has had more Sugar Bowl appearances than LSU, and that's Alabama with 12. Only to the 25, Nick Piazza. Well, we have seen big bowl game comebacks. As I mentioned earlier today, Ohio State against South Carolina, down 28 nothing. Illinois is going to have to do that, or else this will be an embarrassing start to 2002 for the Big Ten. Well, it's an embarrassment for the Illinois defensive team. I mean, that was that was a time where you come back and you hold serve after Kittner brings his team down for the score, and Illinois' defense was not up to the task. Jerry Punch with Nick Saban. Coach, 344 yards and 34 points in the first half. What an effort by Rohan Davey and Dominic Davis. Well, we're doing a good job on offense, both running and throwing, and those two guys are having a great night, but our receivers are doing a good job as well. They're playing a lot of man-to-man, -man and we're able to take advantage of it. Defensively, they burned you toward the end of the first half in the secondary concern at halftime? Well, we were in a fire zone there, and that was a defensive end trying to take Rocky Harvey. I'd say we got a mismatch there, which probably wasn't very smart on our part, so... Uh, I just think we got to keep playing. This is a very good two-minute team. They came back in five games and won this year. So, you know, we got to play for 60 minutes, and we certainly can't let up on defense. Thanks, Coach. All right, thanks, Dave. A Sugar Bowl record 27 points. And, John and Terry, as we send it to you, in California, it is all LSU at the Nokia Sugar Bowl. So I really sense from our offense that we were up tight. We came out really tight. And we were, I thought we were close to making some plays. We just didn't make them, you know. So we got to make some of those. Got to relax, play like we're capable of, make some plays. Got to do a better job on third downs in both on both sides, defensively getting stops and offensively converting. Can you get pressure on Rohan Davy? Well, we better. We better. We're, we're getting we're getting to him just too late. We've got we've got to get there quicker. We've got to tighten down our coverage a little bit and uh, play more aggressively. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, sir. Michael. All right, Doc, thank you. Uh, a shocking first half. Not that LSU is ahead. LSU is a good team. Illinois could get no rhythm going offensively, David, in that first half. No, the key has been the LSU defensive rush. And up front, the front four doing a great job getting into the pocket. And the defensive backs, we talked about how maligned they've been over the course of the season, making great breaks on the football. The defense has been the story for LSU. And coming in, there was a concern. LeBrandon Tofield out with the ACL injury that he suffered in the SEC title game. Could they run the ball effectively with Dominic Davis? I guess the answer has been yes. Three touchdowns to start the scoring for LSU. The first one was a questionable call. His knee was down before he crossed the plane, but it was on first and goal from the one-inch line. Then the second touchdown, a 25-yarder, and a 16-yarder after that, 20 to nothing, early second quarter, and then through the air. Josh Reed, a touchdown catch, and Robert Royal in the back of the end zone. Two back of the end zone receptions that looked like they were not the player who was supposed to get the ball on those plays. As we look at our Morgan Stanley well-connected storyline, Illinois' offense couldn't establish a ground game, and Kurt Kittner was very slow out of the gate in terms of pass completions. Well, LSU's defense set the table, and Rohan Davey getting some protection up front, working to the speed that you talked about, Mike, on the outside with the wide receivers has really created this lead. Talk about the numbers for the quarterbacks, both playing their final game at these universities. Two seniors, Kittner, 5 of 17. He's had slow starts before this year, but uh, not this slow. 
and compounded by Davies excellent half 33 passes of the 53 pass plays the big play receivers Josh Reed has lived up to his season billing seven grabs for 98 yards Brandon Lloyd has only seen it once for four yards and also had a reverse of 14 and the LSU defense has done some great things to take away Lloyd they've doubled him several times in the first half and Josh Reed is just unstoppable and we talked at the top about the statistics 94 catches over 1700 yards practically uncoverable when he lines up in the slot we see this so often in bowl games where one team comes out to the big start but we often seem come, see comebacks as we mentioned earlier today with Ohio State down big to South Carolina in past years as well so it'll be interesting to see how quickly Illinois can get started offensively how does LSU maintain it what did Nick Saban say in the locker room Jerry Mike it's almost like you were in the locker room because that's exactly what Nick Saban said he said guys earlier today he said South Carolina had 28 points and they let Ohio State back in the football game in the second half and they had to hold on to the field goal to win it 31 28 as time ran out this football team we're playing tonight here talking about Illinois came from behind for the last five games of the year they are dangerous we only played 28 of 30 minutes in the first half we've got to play all 30 in the second half to come out a winner Ron Turner as you saw with Jerry kind of even tempered uh, 847 he's gotten this program back to respectability 0 and 11 four seasons ago his first season in Champaign got it to a bowl game a couple of years ago but this year 10 and 1 outright Big Ten championship now can he get that offense that was so high power scoring 32 a game going in the second half that's going to be uphill sledding for Illinois because a 27 point lead dictates that you have to abandon the running game Kittner's going to have to do some things in the pocket down the field he's going to have to get Brandon Lloyd involved and he's going to have to do it early here a drive is almost a must out of the gate for Illinois to get some sort of momentum and again we saw the comeback from Ohio State today Big Ten team it can happen Illinois gets the ball first. Eugene Wilson does the smart thing and takes a knee, and it'll start from the 20. Kurt Kittner saw LSU set a record for 34 points and a half, most in any half in the history of the Sugar Bowl. This is the 68th Nokia Sugar Bowl, and the highest scoring quarter in Sugar Bowl history, 27, hung up by LSU in the second. Kurt Kittner. Going to go under center here, but I wouldn't be surprised if Illinois jumps into some shotgun. And over the course of the second half, if they do come back, they may want to get into some clock offense, no huddle. First throw is knocked down at the line by Howard Green. We've seen three balls knocked down from the six foot three quarterback. A defensive coordinator for LSU, Gary Gibbs, talked earlier this week about being so tough to get to Kurt Kittner in the pocket. Only 13 sacks given up by this offensive line over the course of the year. But Gibbs said we can get in his face. We can get our hands up against the three-step drop, the quick passing game, and disrupt him in the pocket. And that's what's gone on so far. A second and ten run gets seven for Rocky Harvey. Brady James made the tackle. James, number 11, and Trev Falk, seven are the top two tacklers on this team and both all SEC performers. The problems they've had in the defensive secondary over the course of the year have not allowed Falk and James to blitz a lot. They don't have real gaudy numbers in terms of sacks and tackles behind the line of scrimmage, but boy, they make a lot of plays near the line of scrimmage. Third and a couple. And Kittner on the roll. That's going to be short of the first down with Brandon Lloyd. He cut that route off too soon. They're a half yard short. Early decision for Turner. Uh, we saw a decision come up like this in the first half against Michigan early this year. Turner went for it from his own 33 yard line, only trailing by four with nine minutes to go in the second quarter. And this time, he's going to elect to punt it away. Mistake on the receiver there. You got to be out at that 30 at least. Fits to kick. Yeah, he's got to keep his feet as well. 35 yard kick. Fair caught by Dominic Davis at the 36 yard line. 
Rohan Davy will come in, start this second half. Davy didn't get to celebrate the SEC title in person as he went to an Atlanta area hospital to have those internal injuries that ended up being bruised ribs checked out. Dominic Davis runs it to the 41 yard line. Can you keep momentum by aggressive play calling? Well, you can keep momentum. If, if you're talking LSU, you can keep momentum with the mix. Mm -hmm. And and it has been aggressive play calling. You're right, Mike. They have not hesitated to get into the shotgun, throw on obvious running situations, and that's really what has kept Illinois off balance on defense. You can be aggressive in your play calling and still be smart. Well, 27-point lead, some screens and high percentage passes. And LSU still has to be aggressive because 27 points is not unsurmountable for this Illinois offense. Josh Reed and Michael Clayton miscommunicate on the receiver end. Third down coming up. Josh Reed's a junior. A lot of speculation that he will go pro. 94 catches, 1,740 yards. Your stock may not be that high ever again. Well, and... You know, another year might give him some more seasoning, but I agree. When you're the hot kid on the block, sometimes it's the right decision to go ahead with it. Told me earlier this week he has not made the decision yet. Third and six, incomplete. Eugene Wilson was crashing in on the intended receiver, Webster. And it's three and out for LSU's offense. Aggressive play calling can be a double-edged sword. You have a 27-point lead, and if... You throw in complete passes, it keeps the clock stopped and leaves time for Kirk Kittner. Donnie Jones, right around his season average tonight. That kick, 46 yards, Wilson muffed it, and got it back at the three. Lamar Johnson was putting the pressure on Wilson, who's shaken up. A penalty marker's down back in the area of the kick. Well, there's a break for Illinois, though. They'll take that penalty and try to get better field position. Would have been a bigger break had LSU recovered the fumble. Wilson able to hold on to it, so LSU is going to have to re-kick it here. That was a heck of an effort by Eugene Wilson to get back and make the recovery. Holding. On a kick, Eugene. Ten-yard penalty. Repeat fourth down. So check out Wilson and Brandon Lloyd. The receiver will come back to receive the punt, which he has done just once this year. And he was gesturing over to the Illinois fans seated to his right. Remember, this ball would have been at the three if not for the holding penalty. So let's see how much yardage Illinois gets out of this one. Good hang time. Fair caught. Oh, not fair caught. I bet you could park. But it will be a two-yard violation. Johnson so good in covering the last kick. Didn't give Lloyd two yards to catch the punt. So LSU's going to see Illinois get it at the 30-yard line. And sometimes taking a five-yard penalty on the halo infraction isn't a bad idea. It certainly eliminates the opportunity for a big play on the return halo for violation. Illinois. On a kicking team, five-yard penalty, first down. Especially with a guy who's only caught one punt all year in Brandon Lloyd. So instead of having it at the three, Illinois will have it at its own 30. 27 yard difference because of the two penalty flags. The Nokia Sugar Bowl, part of the Bowl Championship Series on ABC. Congratulations to Mike Malati and Oregon. Very impressive over Colorado earlier today. Here it's Illinois in a big hole, and Kurt Kittner trying to work out of it. Deep ball for Young. He took it away from Hookfin. 
and Young is inside the 10. Took it right away from Demetrius Hookfin, who's 5'11". Half a foot made a 61-yard difference. Now Walter Young goes six foot five, 218 pounds. He's a converted quarterback. And Ron Turner said that he was one of the big differences on the offense this year. I mean, he just snatched that ball from Demetrius Hookfin. And that might have been the play that Illinois needed to get jump started here in the second half. Just took it right away from Hookfin. First and goal, Harvey. Pulled down at the six by an inspired Brady James. Rocky Harvey, the ball carrier, first ball from the tackle. Gain of two to the six. Antonio Harris now checks in. Watch for play action here. There you go, David. Is anybody open? No. Is Kittner down? Yes. Former tight end Kyle Kipps with the sack. Yeah, and evidently LSU was looking for play action. This fake in the backfield fooled nobody on the LSU defense. That's Lawrence coming free first, and then Kipps finishing Kittner off. And Kyle Kipp was a two-year starter at tight end. Because of all the depth that the Tigers have at tight end, he was moved to defensive end and has become a big part of the defense late in the season. Yeah, his full career touchdown reception. That'll back him up five. Movement by Tony Pashos, the junior right tackle. Ball start, offense, five-yard penalty. The Illinois self-destructing a bit Illinois down here on the goal there. line. At second and goal, goal inside the 10, the Pashos, first team all Big Ten, right tackle, coming up out of his stance. And Kittner has to be careful. It's early in the third quarter. If you don't have something, take the three points. Still a lot of time. This is third and goal. Routes run to the end zone. Kittner fires deep in the end zone. Brandon Lloyd, Major League Pitch and Catch. Lloyd, the touchdown reception. Christopher Lockus on for the extra point. In the Big Ten bowl games count for your season stats. So that touchdown pass 25. The all-time single season mark in Illinois history. Three plays, 75 yards on the first touchdown drive. Four plays, 70 yards on Lloyd six on this one. Brought to you by Nokia, the ability to personalize your phone, your life, your world. Nokia, connecting people. Your Morgan Stanley financial advisor who will never let you lose sight of what you're investing for. Chrysler, drive equals love. And Taco Bell, think outside the bun. One of the toughest tickets in Sugar Bowl history. That included the Illinois fans as well. Coming to see Brandon Lloyd and company try to become the first Illinois team to win 11 games in a season. The kickoff to Dominic Davis. Two yards deep, going to bring it out. A little space here for Davis. And returned out to the 34-yard line. Send you back to the touchdown catch by Lloyd. Now, this is a great play, an adjustment made by Brandon Lloyd. Watch him get to the 
center of the field. He's not going to come underneath, but he's going to give the hand signal and get more depth. This comes from playing a long time with Kurt Kittner working out during the summers. That hand signal indicated to Kittner that he was going to gain depth, and Kittner led him beautifully. There you see they've been quick strike on offense. Lloyd's uncle, Jim Franks, is the commissioner of the Southwestern Athletic Conference, predominantly African-American schools down here in the South. He's been in this uh, Superdome as a ball boy before. Tonight he's here as a player. Josh Reed goes over 100 receiving yards and picks up a first down at the 47-yard line. First down number 20 picked up by this LSU offense tonight. And our first and ten line brought to you by Monster.com. Move the line, move the chains, as LSU looks to maintain a 20-point advantage. Again to the air. Green again at the 32. Illinois' cornerbacks are very good, highly touted. But LSU, with its three receiver set field, they can throw on them, and they are. Oh, when Davey makes this accurate a throw, and with this much arm strength off his back foot, not much a secondary can do about it. And the reason is Josh Reed. I mean, when he runs that dig route, that deep crossing route to the middle of the field, he gets such great separation. If the ball's on target, you can't stop it. See those numbers? They look great. Those are still below his average for the season. That's how good he's been this year. Third throw of this drive. Davey wants more. Wants Reed. Touchdown! Josh Reed beat one of the best cover corners, not only in the Big Ten, but the country on this post round. And once again, the ball's right on time and right on target. In the history of the Southeastern Conference, no receivers ever had a better season than Josh Reed did this year. He's putting an exclamation point on it in the Nokia Sugar Bowl tonight. Rohan Davey has already set a completions, attempts, and yardage passing record in LSU Bowl history. 314 yards and three touchdowns. And a stunned Illinois defense has given up 41 in the first 35 minutes. Eugene Wilson's return out to the 21. Josh Reed had them all on that drive. This might, might be the finest display of route running I've seen at the college level in a long time. The underneath route, running away from man-to-man -man receivers. And look at the cushion that Eugene Wilson is playing with. Doesn't matter. He makes number 28 look like he's standing in quicksand. That's a double move down the field combined with an arm fake from Rohan Davey. And you can't get it done at receiver unless you have a trigger man. Rohan Davey having a huge night. Kittner, big hit, but good grab by Davis. Carry Davis gets right down the middle for pickup of 23. Ron Turner happy that he's getting his fullback involved. Carry Davis might be the best receiving fullback in the country. Great feel for the short game. This time he gets down the field and watch the smack from Ryan Clark. Number two, James was also on the scene. That's a wonderful play by a fullback to hold on to that football. Kipner loaded. Up high, just go get it, Walter Young. Pitch and catch with Damian James covering, trying to cover. But again, there's that half foot size differential on these corners. Oh, we saw Joe Theismann trying to fit the ball into the Nokia phone about 15 yards away at halftime. Watch this throw. This has to be right on the money, and Kittner is trying to put the ball up just where Walter Young can go get it. Second highlight reel catch that Young has made in the second half. 
first run of this drive as Harvey for a few yards. Wasn't it nice of Joe to come up to the booth so we could pat him on the back? <laughs> Joe came up to visit after his uh, performance in the Nokia Million Dollar Halftime Challenge. Watching him thread it in practice yesterday, I kind of had a feeling he'd have some success tonight. He did. You'll see that one day and be embarrassed. Kittner with the arm pump comes back toward Young, and it's incomplete. Brady James was bringing the pressure. Yeah, the pump fakes and the, the stop and goes and the out and ups have been such a big part of Illinois' offense this year. Look at the pump fake. But Demetrius Hookpin, the cornerback, stays glued on the outside to Lloyd. Kittner had to come down underneath. Tight coverage against Walter Young. Kittner from Schaumburg, Illinois, was actually recruited by Nick Saban when the LSU head coach was in charge of Michigan State's football program. Third and seven, five in the pattern. Man coverage, incomplete. Flag does come in as Moorhead was tackled by Travis Daniels. Some people might scratch their head at this comment, but that was a good play by Daniels. He was beat. Daniels, a true freshman who is seeing his very first snaps of the season here over the last two games. That fade ball had six written all over it. Pass interference, defense, half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Now looking back at the fade route, Walter Young sets him up with a double move. At the line of scrimmage, gets behind Daniels, and Daniels makes a good play there. Only half the distance to the goal line. Remember, this is college, so Illinois will get the ball first and goal at the 10. Daniels didn't play all season until the SEC title game. It was going to be redshirted, but Randall Gay got hurt. They needed a DB. The official stopping play here. Daniels had been in conversation with Nick Saban the week prior to the SEC title game, and Nick said, we may need you. I said, that's okay. You can burn my red shirt year. If I can help us win a championship, I will, because I've never won a championship at any level. Wouldn't you know fourth quarter? Two big pass plays broken up by the true freshman Travis Daniels as he saw his first action ever. And I'm not sure, Mike, that's ever happened in college football to go all the way through a regular season, have a kid not play, and his red shirt year gets used up after the regular season is finished. Right. And even afterwards, he said, was it worth it? It was totally worth it just to be part of that SEC title team. It is not first and goal now. It is first and ten after they remark the ball. A completion of just three yards to Walter Young. They had miscalculated the mark off on the flag, so they brought it back to the 13 will be second down and seven for the first down ten for a touchdown halfway through the third quarter now for Kittner especially following the LSU touchdown field goal doesn't do much good this time this is a must-have for a touchdown for Illinois offense here's Kittner to Lord to the end zone touchdown <laughs> Spectacular work by the other receiver, Young. Walter Young just gave Lloyd enough of a bump to get his second touchdown of the quarter. The Kittner on the move, and we talk about Walter Young springing Lloyd at the goal line, nice. but it was the pass that made the play. Kittner was under heat in the pocket, and that was a nice pass to the outside, moving to his right. Peter Christofalakis adds the extra point. As was predicted, high-scoring game in the Nokia Sugar Bowl. It's not over yet for Illinois. They're down 20. Brandon Lloyd came into this game not as if he needed inspiration, second-team All-Big Ten performer. 
but he said he watched tapes not just of LSU's defense, but of their offense, and specifically Josh Reed. He said, I want to know what it takes to be the Bolitnikoff Award winner, best receiver in the country. But Lloyd's having a, quite a half here after being held in check in the first half. Two touchdowns, now 10 for the season. That ties the single-season school record. Reed has set plenty of LSU records this season and already tonight. If Illinois' defense can make a stop at any point here, this might get a little more interesting. Dominic Davis. A flag will come down, and this LSU drive will start from inside the Tiger 50. Illegal block in the back on the receiving team. Ten yard penalty. First down. And Mike, you talk about the second half that Brandon Lloyd's having. Kittner got off to a one for 13 start. He's hit 11 of his last 13 balls. Wow. 221 yards and three touchdowns. Well, Mike Cassidy, the defensive coordinator, has brought pressure and turnovers to this uh, Illinois defense. They had 26 turnovers this season and 39 sacks. Mike's defense has been lit up for 41 points and 415 yards. But if they can make a big play, it can change the tenor of the rest of this game. Dominic Davis runs out of Jerry Schumacher's tackle. Joe Beavis brought him down at the 13. Let's check out the stars for Louisiana State's offense tonight. This season, it's been Reed with the record 1,740 yards. Davy with the record passing season. And LeBrandon Tofield tied an SEC record with 19 rushing touchdowns. He's out because of the knee injury, and Dominic Davis has certainly filled his place tonight. Tofield stays healthy, probably breaks that record, and he also goes over the 1,000-yard mark. Five receivers in the pattern, and Davis underneath is shoved forward and past the first down line by Eugene Wilson. Illinois' defense is going to have to stand up and be counted. Doesn't matter how many points you put on the board. If you're Kurt Kittner in the offense, Illinois' defense has to make a stop. And there's plenty of time, over six minutes to go in the third quarter. This is only a 20-point game. It's a three-score game. Clock stops in college football on first downs. A world of time left. But Illinois' defense has to step up. They're going to bring the chains across and measure this one. Looked like he had it. Across the first and ten line. He did. Tomorrow our bowl fest continues. Rex Grossman will not start for Florida against the ACC champions, Maryland. It's the FedEx Orange Bowl. Coverage begins live at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC. Home of the Bowl Championship Series. Two of the BCS games tonight. The FedEx Orange Bowl tomorrow. And the Rose Bowl presented by AT&T. The BCS title game on Thursday night. Keith Jackson, Tim Grant, and Swan Todd Harris. Dominic Davis has run across the 20 to the 21-yard line. Do you think about conferences in the postseason, kind of measure how the best from each league do against each other. One thing that's apparent, Big Ten better buckle up its defensive straps here, okay? We saw Purdue let Washington State score 33. Michigan State let Fresno score 35. Today, South Carolina 31 on Ohio State. Michigan let Tennessee score 45. And LSU's here at 41. What happened to the old Big Ten defenses? Out of character. And, and Illinois is not getting to Davey. And unless they start getting to Davey, not much help for the cornerbacks in the secondary. Which came, Reed in man coverage gets open. And after the catch continues to prove he is so worthy of that Belindikoff award. Mike, we've mentioned the mix of run and pass for LSU offensively, but they've also mixed 
the passing game well with throws underneath the quick passing game and you see right there the protection in the pocket the quick ball outside and a quick out to Josh Reed and then Rohan Davey sits in the shotgun gets protection they identify the blitzers he gets some extra time and takes his shots down the field. And how about the job Ben Wilkerson, the center, did on the blitz from Muhammad Abdullah, the free safety? True freshman. Oh. Can't believe he's playing in the SEC championship game at that position. Schumacher blitz. Flag comes in for pass interference on the linebacker, Joe Beavis. And coverage on the tailback. And that'll cost him 15. Passing offense sometimes is all about mismatches. Dominic Davis at the top of the screen is going to sneak out up the left sideline. Schumacher, you know, Schumacher held up on that blitz. He didn't come full speed because he was worried about Davey slipping him in the pocket. And that gave Davey enough time to get the ball up the sideline. Mismatch Beavis all over Dominic Davis. Obvious pass interference call. One of the rare times Davey's been brought down. Schumacher got him earlier in the game. Illinois had no sacks on LSU tonight. And they average about three and a half sacks per game. Jarrell Myers to the 39. Close to a first down, and here's Dr. Jerry Punch. Michael, you mentioned the junior linebacker, Jerry Schumacher, who led Illinois with uh, as their leading tackler with 115 on the season, also led the team with six sacks. Now, in the post, in the pre-bowl conditioning, he hyperextended his right knee and actually missed two and a half to three weeks of practice. Didn't get back to practice until about a week before they came down here to New Orleans. So I've got to believe he is not nearly 100%, and he is the go-to guy when it comes to getting pressure on the quarterback. Schumacher is not your typical middle linebacker in the Big Ten. He's not a plugger. He's the type of guy that can run and make tackles. He's a sideline-to-sideline -side middle linebacker. Kind of fits this defense, pressure-style defense. You need a player like that. Here Absolutely. Over to the 36-yard line. Pick up a four. Talk about Big Ten linebackers. The guy right there on the left-hand side of the screen is Chris Spielman, one of the great Big Ten prototypical linebackers, with Charlie Steiner broadcasting the game on ESPN Radio. Played about the same time I played, and I am glad I never had to line up against that guy. <laughs> Spiel's a great guy. I'd still be feeling it. Former Detroit Lion, Buffalo Bill as well. We're really enjoying broadcasting now. Davey and Reed that time misconnect because the coverage was good. It will be third down coming up with 3.41 left third quarter. Nick Saban has himself a first-rate leader in Rohan Davey. And Davey set the foundation with the comeback win. A year ago in the Peach Bowl, down 14 to three against Georgia Tech, a great Georgia Tech team, coached by Ralph Friedgen, who moved on to Maryland. Rohan Davey in this offense in that Peach Bowl posted 25 unanswered points in the second half. That was a foundation for this season. That was a game where Friedgen, as you said, had moved on and was not the offensive coordinator. We'll see him against Florida tomorrow in the FedEx Orange Bowl. Be interesting to see if that Maryland team, which had a similar season to Illinois, surprising in their conference, how they respond to the speed of the team from the SEC in Florida. Undoubtedly the surprise story in college football this year. Third and seven. They get it with Myers. First down on the nickelback, Michael Hall. That third Illinois receiver. Whoever it's been tonight has really done some damage. Oh, this was great coverage by Michael Hall. You can't watch a wide receiver tighter than this on an underneath route. And Jarrell Myers came into the game with 134 career receptions. With this kind of route and this type of throw, I mean, Hall was all over. Just better play between quarterback and wide receiver. Myers, fourth catch. Davey approaching 350 yards. Right, all day. Davis. Touchdown. His 
his fourth of the night. But a marker's down. And this one's coming back for a hole. Mike, this play is coming back, but you won't see a better play by a running back out of the backfield. Dominic Davis gets knocked off his track, uh, knocked off his course by Ty Myers and still comes inside to make this play. 55, Ben Wilkerson, the true freshman center, was the guilty party. Of course, we said something nice about him earlier this drive. <laughs> As a true freshman, you're due a couple of those from now from time to time. Devery Henderson now in at tailback. To get out to the 36-yard line. He averaged nearly six yards a carry, 47 times he ran it this year. His problem, a couple of key fumbles, including one in the Ole Miss game. But he also has a world of talent. Nick Saban has done a great recruiting job in the last couple of years. I, I never believe these recruiting deals because you know, if Notre Dame always has the best recruiting class, how come they didn't win all the time? You know, or the top five recruiting class. But the experts say LSU's class this past year was the best in the nation. And if you can control Louisiana, you're going to have a darn good football team. And Nick's getting close to that. Davey, Michael Clayton. One of those true freshmen couldn't hang on. Those of you who might just be joining us on this New Year's night, check out our Tostitos game summary. How we've got 62 points on the board. A lot of passing offerings from LSU. 27 points in the second quarter, a Sugar Bowl record. 34 points in the half as well, a record. Illinois has come back with an mostly pass-based offense here in the third. But their defense needs to make a big play on something like third and 18. They drop eight in coverage this time. And Reed cannot get to it. Decision here, it's a 53-yard field goal attempt on the back end of the kicker's range. Nick's thinking. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he's talking over some kind of fake. And here's the secondary dropping deep as Rohan Davey gets stepped in the pocket. The secondary reacts. Reed not quite quick enough getting over the top of Wilson to make a play on that ball. And this is a great spot for a fake. LSU has turned the cameras off a couple times in practice this week, and they have gone with a fake punt. Illinois kept its base defense on. Donnie Jones will try to pin him inside the 20. And will. Good job. It will be down to the 13. Only a 23-yard punt. But effective. Well, the NFL season wraps up. We have the Monday nighter this week on Sunday night over on ESPN. Warren Sapp and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers will try to stop Donovan McNabb and the Eagles. Sunday Night Football, 8.30 Eastern on ESPN. Those two teams likely to meet again the next week in the playoffs. I think key drive of the game here. Kipner with five in the pattern, over shoots. Antonio Harris. Well, the Illinois offensive line is starting to hold up better under this LSU rush. David Deal, the right guard who stepped in for Bucky Babcock. Babcock broke a wrist in a car wreck after the finale against Northwestern. Deal, a nice job inside creating the pocket for Kittner. Deal played about 40% of the snaps this year. Who comes in in the starting role and is going the distance tonight. The quick speed of Rocky Harvey can't get going past the 18-yard line. 
That's some stubborn play calling there by Ron Turner. Going with the run on second down. Puts a lot of pressure on your offense. Looking at a third and six. And as you mentioned, Mike, this is the most important drive of the game for Illinois. The third quarter ticks down. Ron Turner, assistant under Dennis Green at Stanford. Just like Tyrone Willingham, who took the Notre Dame job. Had his press conference today. Would have been nice if today was reserved for the teams that earned their space on New Year's Day. Hickner sack down at the four. Ryan Clark brought the blitz. Hickner sack by number two, Ryan Clark. LSU has not been a blitzing team this year. Secondary has not been able to hold up, but Ryan Clark coming on the safety blitz and Kittner is not able to slip him to the outside. Kittner was waiting for Lloyd down the field to come open. Big sack for the free safety. Good rush almost blocked by LeVar Johnson who's had a great special teams night. Fair caught by Dominic Davis at the 43. 38 yards on the kick. Almost a block by Johnson. That doesn't come much closer than this. Johnson getting that right arm up. Talk about Ron Turner, Nick Saban. Also a coach who's had uh, NFL experience in his background. Both of these men recently coordinators in the National Football League. Nick had a great defense in Cleveland. Ron turned around the Chicago Bear offense before moving to Champaign. Their names come up often when uh, NFL jobs or other college jobs come up. And Nick Saban was pretty adamant about how he really wants to stay at LSU. Although born in West Virginia and a lot of his football days in Ohio and the Northeast, he really likes the South. People wondered how good a fit he'd be. He said he and his wife have made great friends, really feel comfortable. Feels more like West Virginia where they're from than it did up north at uh, Michigan State. Form is holding true tonight. Nick Saban is 5-0 against Illinois as the third quarter comes to a close. And he's looking for a second bowl win in two years at LSU. Off we go to the fourth quarter. LSU 41. Illinois 21. And ABC Sports coverage of the Nokia Sugar Bowl will continue after this message. And a word from your ABC station. is the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Nick Saban looking for his third head-to-head -head win over Ron Turner. Two guys who got to know each other, not just in their Big Ten days, but when they were coordinators in the NFL. Their team scrimmaged against each other during the summer. Davies' toss to start the fourth quarter is incomplete for Michael Clayton. Up in uh, Wisconsin at Platteville, they, the Bears and the Cleveland Browns scrimmage together and a chance to set up practices together just to give you a look as opposed to your own defense or offense. And they said over you know, a few adult beverages and cigars, they got to plan out practices, talk strategy. This was back in the uh, 93 and 94 season. And they went head to head 97 and 98 in the Big Ten. Nothing wrong with a couple of beers and cigars with the schedules these guys lead head coaching the 18 20 hour days third and nine Illinois rushing four up front Reed could not hang on and Illinois will get the LSU offense off the field without points scored again but Jimbo Fisher has called a great game 41 points through three quarters for his offense LSU and Mike he has stayed aggressive with his play calling to the point where, you know, that going with back-to-back -back passes there keeps the clock stopped and still only a 20-point game. Plenty of time for Kirk Kittner. Donnie Jones to kick it again. A lot of punts in this game for 62 points. Flags will come down. Post start. Kicking team. Five-yard penalty. Repeat fourth down. This is the first time these two universities have met in football. 
first game in the state of Louisiana for Illinois. You see LSU heavily penalized here tonight. Illinois, 80 yards to go, down 20. Early stages, fourth quarter of the Nokia Sugar Bowl here on ABC. We've already seen Joey Harrington of Oregon close out his career, final game at Oregon, with a win in one of the bowl championship series games. It'll happen no matter who wins here tonight. The senior Kittner trying to rally the Illini. Long ball for Lloyd. Nearly. Oh, it was intercepted. Spectacular play. Randall Gay took it away. Somebody's shoe came down in the process, but the ball stayed with LSU. Well, Kittner's taking a shot down the field to Brandon Lloyd. The coverage provided by a strong safety, Norman Lejeune. Lejeune beaten but then recovers and gets a hand on it, deflects it to Gay, and Gay continues to have a great night. Lejeune was beaten early. Ball was a little bit underthrown. He got that inside position, made a nice play on the ball, and Davey has the ball back. See if LSU goes to more of a run-based offense here. A three-yard run for Dominic Davis. Josh Reed had scooted off the field momentarily. He had to go to the restroom. So that's why Josh is not on the field right now. So I wasn't expecting a one-play turnover drive. <laughs> that happens to the best of them. Josh is back. Second and seven. They keep throwing. Jarrell Myers couldn't come up with that one. Third down coming up. Now LSU continues <laughs> to throw the football. I hear the laughter in your voice. Now I, you know, 20 point lead, 13 minutes, a little more, 13 and change to go in the ball game. And I think you got to start working on the clock a little bit here. Now you don't want to become totally conservative. But a lot of incomplete passes. You made the point, Mike, that we've seen a lot of punts with all the points that have been scored, 62 points. And a lot of that is, has to do with all the passing we've seen. I can understand all the passing from Illinois, but LSU has to start being cognizant of the clock. Third and seven. Davy pressure and goes down. Big sack back at the 18. Ty Myers started it. Michael O'Brien came in for some cleanup. That's going to flip the field a little bit. Well, Illinois is not only going to save some clock for Ron Turner, but they're going to get some field position. And if the Fighting Illini can score with eight, nine minutes still left on the clock, they'll be in this game. Here comes the pressure. Ty Myers, we mentioned the blitz can come from any level, linebacker or secondary, with this Mike Cassidy defense. And they get to Rohan Davis. Two men back for the punt. Be careful of a re reverse here. Lloyd scooped it and is down at the 46. Good field position for the Illini. Almost a must score drive coming up. The Nokia Sugar Bowl. This ABC Sports exclusive brought to you by Nokia. The ability to personalize your phone, your life, your world. Nokia connecting people. Charles Schwab, expert advice that's objective, uncomplicated, and not driven by commission. Ford, America's number one choice for 15 straight years. And FedEx, ground, international, online, or express. There's a FedEx for that. A big run for Harvey. Gets Illinois a first down out to the 40-yard line of LSU. So a first down run surprises the Tigers a little bit. Inside of 13 minutes now, fourth quarter. And Nick Saban, once criticized for being conservative, uh, anything but conservative uh, the last few weeks. The Auburn game, the onside kick to start the last regular season game. 
Offense hasn't been conservative in the second half, and maybe it's giving Illinois time for a comeback. Kittner just got rid of that. Incomplete. Trev Falk was bringing the pressure. Kirk Kittner is heated up here in the second half. Time to check our Nokia best connection of the game. And Kittner's throwing in the second half for Lloyd. A couple of times for touchdown. After starting one of 13, had a hot spell of 11 of his next 12. Missed the last few. Second and 10. Man coverage for Lloyd. Went up to make a play and almost intercepted again by Randall Gay, who's having a very good night. Now, Randall Gay is the number three cornerback for LSU. James and Hook Finn have been the starters during the five-game win streak, but Gay has played superb on the outside. Reads the eyes of Brandon Lloyd, looks back for the football, and almost comes down with an interception. Look at him fight for the football with that left hand. This Illinois offense is very comfortable taking shots down the field. They've done it tonight. LSU's corners have hung in there. Third and ten. They're in four down territory. Lloyd, first down and more. 23 yards to the 17. The Illini in the red zone. Well, Randall Gay with some pretty good coverage once again on the quick slant. Not much room for error on this throw. Crisp, quick slant on the outside by Lloyd. Perfectly placed ball and a nice catch with the hands. A lot of times, Mike, on that quick slant, receivers like to catch the ball with the body in the front pocket. That time Lloyd had to go up with the hands. That was a nice catch. LSU shows blitz. They bring a few. This one for Harvey. Incomplete. Well, Harvey's upset with himself. Now, Harvey got matched up with the linebacker, Brady James, circling out of the backfield. And Kittner did a nice job of putting some air under this ball. And Harvey should have had that. I mean, that's not an easy catch for a tailback, but Harvey's a great receiver out of the backfield, and that's why he got up and slapped the turf. He wanted another... But hey, I'd love another shot at that one because I felt I could have brought that one in. Three receivers here. The shoulder pump the other way. That's a touchdown. And they're back in it. Walter Young. It was 41-14. Kittner is throwing four touchdown passes on the night. Peter Christofalakis adds the extra point. Young, 138 yards. He catches a touchdown. And the alma mater of Hugh Hefner and Roger Ebert are still in this picture show. <laughs> it's a 13-point LSU lead with 11.33 to go. <laughs> 69.782 yards. And more to come, if I had a guess. Kurt Kittner, four touchdown passes. Three of them coming here in the second half. 262 yards, and Rohan Davey, who has 350 yards, has put it in the air 48 times tonight. The number is 13. And this is Dominic Davis on the return. 
tackled at the 35 by Carlos Lattimore. Here's the touchdown. Now, Kirk Kittner's a four-year starter. He sees the field so well. He recognizes man-to-man -man on the left side. Young against Hookfin. Set it up with a beautiful arm fake to the right side. And watch Young double tap that left foot to clearly get it in bounds. Lloyd's had a great second half, number six. But Walter Young has matched him. Three great catches here in the second half of this football game. And the catch gives Kittner an Illinois bowl record. Four TD passes in the game. Big drive for the Tigers. Nope. That's Brett Potter coming in, being heard from. A loss of about five. And here's Jerry Punch. And guys, Ron Turner's favorite word is focus. And that's why he has a picture of Tiger Woods on the locker room door back in Champaign. Now, Tiger is down like he's crouching over a putt and has his hands cupped around his face as if he's looking through a tunnel. And what Ron Turner says, see what Tiger does? He has tunnel vision, total focus. He's focusing on the next putt. That's what we have to do, focus on the next play. That's what Illinois is doing falling back into this one. Tiger's agent, Mark Steinberg, was a walk-on on the Illinois Final Four basketball team in 89. Second down, they throw. It's Reed. It'll be third and eight coming up. Eugene Wilson on the tackle. Well, LSU has had a wonderful offensive game plan, and they posted 41 points in a hurry against this Illinois defense. But Mike, they've rolled the dice some with their play calling late in the third quarter, early in the fourth quarter. You don't want to go conservative, but certainly you want to work the clock some. And Jimbo Fisher now on this drive trying to mix in some sure passes and some runs to work on that clock. Those are the Illinois fans you hear. 15,000 strong, but strong in voice here. Davey, good coverage downfield. Now a man slips, and Reed gets it for the first down. Christian Morton lost his footing. And Reed's 13th catch takes him over 200 yards. Another big play from Josh Reed. Another great deep ball from Rohan Davey. But the offensive line gave Davey the time. You can't make double moves and have the deep routes down the field and hit them unless you get the time in the pocket. That time Davey had time to count the house. What a big play for LSU. Josh Reed is approaching his Alabama game numbers. 227 yards here tonight. Davis crawls forward to the 16 in the game against Alabama. Josh Reed had the best receiving game in the history of the Southeastern Conference. And this is a league that's been around for a long time with some great players. 19 catches, 293 yards. Tonight, he's 13 for 227, a Sugar Bowl record. If Rohan Davey keeps this up, he's going to blow the top off the 508 yards that he posted against Alabama in that game. Rohan is a shade under 400 right now. A little shovel pass with Reed. He's at the 10 and the 5 and takes it to the 3. back demoralizing plays for Ron Turner and his Illinois team. The shovel pass, the lower body strength. Look at that cut. That was a beautiful cut up inside against Christian Morton. You're going to break a cornerback's ankle if you make moves like that. And Josh Reed finishes off the run with power. Davey now a Sugar Bowl record. 410 passing yards tonight. Davis looking for four scores and seven more. Touchdown. Reed brought him down there. And Dominic closed the deal for the fourth time tonight. Up 19, the chart tells you to go for two, and that's what LSU will do here. 
That's the right call. Here in the third quarter, you maybe take the point. Fourth quarter, 8.39 to go. This is the right decision. They'll meet the play clock looking for points 48 and 49. Intercepted by Bobby Jackson. This counts as a failure on the two-point conversion. Josh Reed and Rohan Davey. Davey, 410 passing yards. Reed, 239 receiving yards. Dominic Davis, four rushing touchdowns. It's a Tiger night. LSU is threatening Florida's record from the 97. Remember the 52 to 20 demolition of then top ranked Florida State. That 52 from the Mighty Gators is the all time record for points scored in the Sugar Bowl. LSU's already set 17 bowl records tonight. They fake the reverse and Lloyd brings it out to the 26 yard line. Now it's time for the four tough play of the game. Talking about tough, Josh Reed, yards after the catch, and this does count as a pass reception. And that's a definitive Josh Reed type of catch. He doesn't even resemble a wide receiver with that bill. Well, he wasn't. He, he was a running back. And uh, Josh Booty, actually, the former LSU quarterback, suggested, hey, how about him at wide receiver? The pass is high and incomplete. Well, Josh Reed didn't convert from running back to wide receiver until the seventh game of his freshman season. Jerry DiNardo was the head coach then. The end of uh, his tenure and Booty, the quarterback, suggested to it. his head coach, why don't we move Josh? And what's happened is Reed has come up with back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons. This the best season by a receiver in SEC history and is being capped with a outstanding 14 catch 239 yard sugar bowl. <laughs> On second down, Kirk Kittner flush and sack. The pressure came from Muskegon Barnes, 91. On the hit. End of the month, Sunday, January 27th, Stephen King, the modern master of suspense, brings the terror home. Rose Red, a world premiere event, Sunday, January 27th, only on ABC. Not going to watch that one alone. <laughs> <laughs> that was a little grim. You're going to pay somebody <laughs> to watch it with you? <laughs> Might have to. <laughs> Third and 15 for Kittner and the Alana. Pressure. Just got rid of it. Hendrick Allen bringing the heat. Kittner took the worst of that one. Yeah, valiant effort by Kurt Kittner throughout this football game. Had the hand injury in the first half. Ryan Clark seemingly coming on every down. That time he backed out on the free safety blitz. And pressure right up the gut. Brady James along with... Kendrick Allen arriving in the pocket. The LSU has been able to get pressure on Kittner consistently, and it has helped the secondary make plays all night. This is the 17th punt tonight. Not a likely combination in a game where we've seen 75 points. They're caught by Dominic Davis at the 34. Do you blame him? He's got four rushing touchdowns. He's exhausted. <laughs> you want him to return punts? Talk about the big numbers. Let's sort them out on the FedEx ground and air stats. The ground has not been the chosen method of delivery this evening. The air has 672 passing yards on 85 attempts. we got to get our statistician an abacus. No, no, no. We have, <laughs> we have Marty Aronoff, the best in the business. We have no need for an abacus. <laughs> Got Marty, who's been around longer than the abacus. And we'll go to the ground with Davis. Part of this record-setting performance, he takes it out near the 40. Brett Cotter in on the tackle. 
The future is so bright for this LSU team. When Nick Saban came here, he took over a team that was 3-8 and eight and had lost 13 of its 15 Southeastern Conference games. Quite a turnaround. And it comes from Nick's personality trait of relentless attention to detail. There is no small hair in this program that Nick Saban doesn't know about. Jerry Punch. Guys, uh, earlier in the year we talked to Miami head coach Larry Coker, who went to a coaching clinic last year and worked uh, with Lou Holtz. He said while they were at the clinic, he heard Lou Holtz tell one of the coaches that you don't get beaten by someone playing catch, but you do get beaten by someone running the ball after they catch it. I wonder if Lou had Josh Reed in mind. Certainly that's what he has made a living at here at LSU. Well, Lou and uh, USC, the Gamecocks, did not see LSU on the schedule this year and probably glad they did. 94 receptions for Reed coming into the game. 75 of those were for first downs. Unbelievable. Michael Clayton. That ball is free. Belongs to the Illini. And a return for Bobby Jackson. Still going. And brought down right back at the original line of scrimmage. The 40-yard line. That's the first LSU turnover of the night. LSU continuing to have success in the air. Michael Clayton, a lot of success on the crossing routes in this football game. And the hit comes late. Helmet right on the ball. Terrell Washington, number 85. And then Bobby Jackson scoops it. And looked for a moment there like he was headed for the end zone. That's a great play by Terrell Washington. And he's a defensive lineman coming all the way back what 15 18 yards past the line of scrimmage great hustle and he laid the wood to the true freshman Bobby Jackson the ball hawk Steven Peterman was shaken up on the tackle of the return and he walks off well this Illinois defense comes up with its first turnover of the night Likely too late. Stranger things have happened. If Illinois can strike quick. There's always a thing called an onside kick. <laughs> Lloyd might throw. Kintner down the seam is covered very well by LSU. Now the throw to Walter Young. Touchdown! Oh, good stuff. You want to go for two here, get it to an 11 point game, so a touchdown two point conversion and field goal would tie it. Ron Turner all over that. Let's take another look. I mean, Lloyd buying time in the pocket, stayed alive. Look at Young, the hand signal. Now he's going to turn it up. And Clark having trouble staying with him. Young has used his size tremendously here in the second half. Young is the converted quarterback. Now they go for two. It's an important play here. Down 13. Hitner. Nobody home. Good coverage by Randall Gay. That was a misfire. Just another touchdown pass. That's 81 points tonight. And we might not be done in New Orleans. sees coverage of the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Right, this is just uh, the start of it. Davey, 410 yards. Dominic Davis, 24 points. LSU scored 34 in the first half. Illinois, 27 here in the second half. Now lining up, perhaps for an onside kick. 5.41 to go. They're down two scores. And have all their timeouts left. LSU... Doesn't have the full hands team on the field. Expecting the long kickoff, and that's what they get here. Devery Henderson will choose to bring it out. 
flag is down, and this one's going to come back. Good field position from an Illinois defensive perspective after this flag. Illegal push in the back. On the receiving team. 10-yard penalty. First down. This was the turnover by Michael Clayton, the true freshman. Big oh, hit. The hustle play by Washington there is huge. Big hit from behind by Washington. And Bobby Jackson heads up play to scoop the fumble. Like he had a shot to take it down the right sideline. And then who would have thought Brandon Lloyd scrambling in the backfield after the reverse handoff. Walter Young helps him out with the hand signal and a great play in the back of the end zone. Those defensive plays, the hustle and the turnover, made by two seniors. Their final moments in Illini, orange and blue. They don't want to go out with a loss. First down run takes it out to the 14-yard line for Devery Henderson. Jerry Schumacher made the play. Well, we talked about the high-profile receivers coming in tonight. Josh Reed has lived up to his numbers. Brandon Lloyd's been held in check. But the attention has allowed Young to have a big night. Five catches and 139 yards for Walter. Now that's what Young has done for the offense. And when defenses have leaned on Lloyd, he's picked up the slack. Kittner not afraid to distribute the ball at the quarterback position. Out of the gun, they will hand it off with Henderson on second and four and lose a couple. Well, Brett Cotter, who's made three big plays in this second half, has set up a huge third down. A reminder, Charles Schwab will make contributions to the scholarship funds of each university represented in the Bowl Championship Series. Mike, Ron Turner's thinking right here, if he can get a stop, don't use the timeouts. Keep them in your back pocket. Remember, the clock stops on first downs. On the next drive, Illinois has to rely on that from Kurt Kittner in the offense, and then you save your three timeouts to stop LSU on the following possession. Needing to get to the 19. Davey, quick pass. It is caught by Corey Webster. First down. A dangerous throw. Well executed as Bobby Jackson, the strong safety, almost got there. It'll give LSU another minute and a half off the clock, probably. Dangerous throw, but huge play. This takes another two minutes off the clock if Illinois doesn't start using the timeouts. Catch number two for Webster on the night. You can feel the sigh of relief from the LSU sideline after that hookup. Corey Webster, the number four receiver, comes in on four wide receiver sets. This is Louisiana State's 89th play of the night. And Henderson takes it out to the 29-yard line. Devery Henderson, big fumble against Kentucky, but lead leg on the 4x100 relay team. You get him into the secondary, lose an angle, and he's gone. Big now, time speed. Now David Illinois has to use those timeouts. So Ron Turner takes his first. Chance to remind you, Saturday, we drop the puck on our ABC Sports National Hockey League season. Avalanche at the Joe to take on the Red Wings. Some of you will see Rangers, Penguins, or the Capitals against the Bruins, who are off to a great start this year. Saturday, 3 Eastern, noon Pacific, here on ABC. You can see the look on Ron Turner's face and also Brandon Lloyd's face. They needed a stop on that third down play to hook up to Webster. And the picture got quite a bit bleaker when LSU moved the chains. You mentioned Ron Turner. He is the younger brother of Norv Turner, San Diego Chargers offensive coordinator who will likely stay, has the option to stay there after Mike Riley was fired earlier this week. A, a neat guy. Did his radio show at fraternities and sororities on campus this year. Try to build some campus momentum in Illinois supporting this program that was 0-11, oh, 0-11, four seasons ago. And we went out there, David, the Penn State game. They were 20,000 shy of a sellout. I've heard a lot of talk this week about how nobody goes to Illinois games and Ron Turner might look to get out of there and go to a more supported program. They sold 20,000 tickets in five days to sell it out for that Penn State game. I haven't seen that happen many places. Yeah, they needed those fans. What a comeback in the last three minutes to pull it out against the Nittany Lions. 
Henderson forward, first down, and a big one across the 34 and out to the 35. You know, the home of the uh, Fighting Illini Memorial Stadium in Champaign will be home to the Chicago Bears in 2002 as they remake Soldier Field. So the Bears are going to play in Champaign. It's uh, a long history and tradition. You go back to the Galloping Ghost and Hallis and Butkus and even the orange and blue colors of the Chicago Bears derive from Illinois' orange and blue. Opening the speedster Henderson takes it across midfield. So Dominic Davis has been the workhorse tonight. As he comes to the sideline, they go with Henderson, whose rap has been his ability to hang on to the ball. And he's hanging on and making big yards with fresh legs at a key spot. We've talked so much about Rohan Davy, the offensive line, Josh Reed. Now this running game with Dominic Davis, Henderson spelling him. What a story. The miss out on toe field, getting to play in this big Sugar Bowl game. And the two other tailbacks pick up the slack. 31 first downs tonight. Henderson, 6 and 7 at a chunk here. Timeout, Illinois. They'll stop it with 2.32 to go here in the Nokia Sugar Bowl. More nights, a great bowl championship series action than Monday Night Football. Al Dennis and Dan will wrap up the regular season in Baltimore with the champion Ravens against Randy Moss and the Vikings, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on ABC. Melissa and Eric will be there as well. LSU wouldn't be here at all in this bowl championship series game if not for the work of Matt Mock, that man right there. Redshirt freshman quarterback from Indiana, three years as a Chicago Cubs backup catcher, came in when Rohan Davey was hurt. His stats weren't impressive, but his ability to run completely took Tennessee out of its game. And with the starting tailback and the starting quarterback out and facing a deficit, LSU rallied in a building that was very pro-Tennessee and won the SEC title game and brought the champions of the West here to the Nokia Sugar Bowl. One of the great stories in the history of the SECs. He's a walk-on, technically. Chicago Cubs paying his tuition. LSU scored on six out of seven drives, and Matt Mock was in at quarterback. Big hit on Henderson by Ty Myers in Illinois. will stop the clock one last time. With Rohan Davy a senior, Matt Mock is the most likely choice to be the quarterback next year. He'll get pushed by Marcus Randall, a redshirt freshman from Baton Rouge. And they also have a good, heady young quarterback in Rick Clawson, who is the younger brother of Casey Clawson, who we saw for Tennessee in their impressive performance over Michigan earlier this afternoon. And Leslie Goodell interviewed Clawson's parents, and the Clawson family came to New Orleans after that game and are uh, here this evening. And quite a night. They'll watch uh, both of their children's teams come away with victory on New Year's Day over the Big Ten. They say Rick Clawson is quite a student of the game. Spends a lot of time in the film room. Still yet to be seen whether he has the throwing talent of his older brother. But enough time for that. And they've got a younger brother who wore that split jersey in the SEC title game. D and LSU for his two big brothers. Well, that's a number right there. Not going to win many games when you get 600 posted on you. Yeah. Oh, a lot of high scoring in the uh, bowl season. I wonder if it'll continue over the next two nights of the bowl championship series. Illinois on a must stop, third and two. Henderson turns it upfield and depending on the spot should have the first down Let's see where they mark it Joe Beavis came in it wasn't a, a great LSU spot well we mentioned the FedEx Orange Bowl tomorrow night Grossman will not start Sean Hill senior quarterback for Maryland will try to keep it going with the wins for senior QBs Harrington Davey here tonight Hill the senior against the sophomore Grossman tomorrow night and then of course 
In the Rose Bowl presented by AT&T on Thursday night, Eric Crouch, the Heisman winning senior, will go against the junior Ken Dorsey. And how about the quarterbacks remaining to be seen here the rest of the week? Get a look at Rex Grossman and then Dorsey and Crouch. Doesn't get better any better than that. Remember, Rex Grossman lit up this LSU defense early in the season. And you talk about Dorsey and Crouch. The numbers with Crouch from a passing standpoint don't impress you, but the 1,000 yards and 18 rushing touchdowns, the dimension Miami's worked on for the last month, trying to stop the option. I'd call that Heisman worthy, and Crouch needs to try to possess the ball, keep the ball moving on the ground if they have hopes of beating Miami. Look forward to settling in Thursday night. Watch the Rose Bowl presented by AT&T. Keith Jackson, Tim Brandt. Lynn Swan, Todd Harris will bring it to you from Pasadena. What a great day it's been here on ABC. Started, oh my goodness, some 14 hours ago with Regis Philbin kicking off the Tournament of Roses Parade. <laughs> Martina McBride, a great addition, rendition of God Bless America. And some terrific college football action this afternoon. And on into tonight. Rohan Davey is the MVP, 31 of 53. 444 yards and three touchdowns. As LSU runs the clock out, thanks to our executive producer of ABC Sports, Howard Katz, director of production Bob Toms, coordinating producer Bob Goodrich. Here in New Orleans, our game produced by Jim Ressler, directed by Drew Esikoff, technical director Brian Holder, associate producer Brian Gordon, associate director Dave Lilling, Denise Nelson, the production manager, Hal Schmidt's technical manager, John Quarrel, Andy Renga, assistant to the producer, Tommy Hall on computer stats, good old Clemson Tommy. Spotter Joe Gallen, Marty Aronoff in the booth with us as well. Sideline coordinator Dale Ball, Jennifer Gansky, and Chelsea Trowbridge, our stage managers in New Orleans tonight. And that feels really good for Nick Saban. LSU will not have to run another play. They've won their fifth straight bowl. Their fourth Sugar Bowl ever and their first Sugar Bowl win since 1968. What a turnaround. Two and three in conference early in November. Nobody, nobody with BCS. And they pull it off. LSU will finish 10 and three. And the Southeastern Conference with an emphatic 3-0 against the Big Ten on New Year's Day. Back to wrap it up from the Superdome in a minute. Setting night for LSU, Jerry Punch with the victorious head coach. And Michael, what a night for LSU and the LSU Tigers. Coach, you time in the locker room. You guys are going to have to hang on half, and you did. Well, we, we respected what Illinois could do relative to their passing game, so I knew they could come back in the game. They came back in five games this year, and we had an opportunity to make some plays, and we didn't make them, and they took the ball away from us, and you got to give their players a lot of credit for the job that they did. But I'm so proud of our players to come back and win six games in a row this year. Uh, and win the Nokia Sugar Bowl. I think we proved that we should be in the top 10 now, and we certainly proved that we should be in a BCS game. So we carried the banner for the SEC, and I'm proud of the way we did it. What about Dominic Davis? Your primary running back, Brandon Tofield, is out. Davis comes in. You're concerned about his durability, and he handles it. Well, he did a great job. In fact, we wore him out in the game, and he couldn't finish the game. But road play game, and I think our offensive team standing football game. And I was proud of the way our defense played in the first half, but. You know, we gave some plays up in the second half, but we did what we had to do to win, and I'm just proud of our entire team, every guy that did anything to help us win. What does this mean to your program? 2-0 in bowls in two years at LSU. Well, I'm, I'm proud of the way our players look at bowl games as a one-game season and really have prepared well and been mature about it. And, you know, this was a little bit of a defining moment, moment for us as a program because, you know, we won the championship, and it was our first opportunity to 
you know, act like a champion and be a champion. And, and I was proud of the way our players did it. I think that's a big lift for them. And hopefully we're going to carry over into being a more dominant team in the future. Hey, Coach, congratulations. Jerry, thank you very much. Well, Mike, the 68th ever of Nokia Sugar Bowl is history, and LSU has records. And, Jerry, you know, has to be looking down with a smile. Charlie McCoy, former great Hall of Fame coach for LSU, who passed away earlier this month. ABC Online at ESPN.com. Keyword for Jerry Punch and David Norrie, our entire crew. Mike Tirico, thanks so much for joining us. Have a great new year. And don't forget, the action continues tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern, the FedEx Orange Bowl. Thursday night, the national championship game, the Rose Bowl presented by AT&T. This is ABC Sports, the tradition of excellence. Number one Miami faces number two Nebraska for the national championship. The Rose Bowl presented by AT&T. Thursday night at 8, 5 Pacific on ABC.